Um, I'd like to call the meeting of the Chino City Council to order, the May 2nd meeting, and I'd like to um, ask our attorney to give a synopsis of the closed session. Closed session and discuss the two items on the closed session agenda, specifically conference with legal counsel, existing litigation of matter A, the Inland Oversight Committee and related parties versus Dennis Yates and related parties. City Council received an update to the status of that lawsuit and no reportable action was taken. Likewise on item B, conference with legal counsel existing litigation, the Chino Basin Municipal Water District versus City of Chino and related parties, the City Council received an update and no further reportable action was taken. But I do understand a summary of the status of the case will be provided by uh, Attorney Gutierrez. Mr. Gutierrez, would you like to come to the lectern? Good afternoon, members of the council and members of the public. Uh, I reported uh, in closed session what is already public, and so what I'm going to say is not a surprise and not a disclosure of anything that uh, uh, would violate. Uh, the Brown Act or the attorney-client privilege. And that is this, on Friday, April 28th, Judge Reichert ruled in favor, well, let's put it this way, against the Watermaster Board and the parties that were seeking to have the court approve an agreement that would have deprived the city of Chino of uh, a great deal of water that the city of Chino has already had in storage and water rights that it uh, has now and would uh, obtain water. I estimate that the current value of water that that gained to the city is about $50 million. Uh, the motion was brought by a number of parties who were in effect seeking to steal the city of Chino's water. Uh, we effectively uh, opposed the motion. The judge denied the motion in every respect against the parties. The only thing the judge did do is he agreed with the technical part of the motion and his independent jurisdiction under the judgment to recalculate the safe yield of the basin and thereby reduce it from 140,000 acre feet to 135,000 acre feet of water. And uh, the other thing is that the judge also granted a cross motion filed by Harupa Community Services that uh, reestablished a priority of land use conversion claims uh, over the unappropriated ag pool water. The agricultural pool uh, controls 82,000 acre feet of water a year, but they only use about 30,000, so the rest of it is available to the appropriators. That's, you know, Chino, the other cities, and the water districts. And there's a priority of how that water dis is distributed. The priority goes first to those entities that are experiencing a conversion of agricultural land to urbanized land and therefore need that water. Uh, that right is going to continue to be honored, first of all, and it benefits Chino, Harupa, and ultimately Ontario. Uh, that is also a victory that, frankly, I didn't expect, but Harupa brought that motion and they were successful on it. So that the net result is that Chino is ahead in terms of its water rights, even with the reduction of the safe yield. There's a whole lot more I can say, but I think that summarizes the, the net effect, and uh, I just uh, want to thank the council for giving me the opportunity to represent the city on this matter, and I want to thank the city staff, especially David uh, Crosley, who has been my technical advisor and the expert that we hired to assist us. So that concludes my report.
Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, the bottom line for the community is we were under threat of losing a lot of our water, um, what we called a savings account, actually. And with Jimmy's help, his expertise, the council backing, we won. So it was like the proverbial, the mouse that roared or David and Goliath. Um, no one thought that we had a chance. They thought they all had more power than we did and that they were just going to take what belongs to the citizens of Chino and they didn't win. So it's good for our community. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, if you'd all stand, I'd like to ask uh, Councilman George to lead us in the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Gary. Okay, under ceremonials, our first proclamation is National Police Week, May 7th through the 13th, and I'd like to call up Chief Comstock. You're welcome. <clears throat> and it reads, Whereas the Congress and the President of the United States have, de have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which it falls as National Police Week, the members of the Law Enforcement Agency of the Chino Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the citizens of Chino. It is important that all citizens know and understand the problems, duties, and responsibilities of their police department and that members of our police department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence or disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression or intimidation. And whereas the police department of Chino has grown to be a modern and highly professional law enforcement agency, which increasingly provides a vital public service, now, therefore, I, Eunice Emiloa, call upon that all citizens of Chino and upon all patriotic civil and educational organizations to observe <clears throat> May 11th through the 17th as National Police Week in which all of our people may join in commemorating <coughs> police officers, past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and in doing so have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. We further call upon all citizens of Chino to observe Monday, May 15th, as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those peace officers who, through their courageous deeds, have lost their lives, including the three officers from the city of Chino, Constable Fred Bristol, Night Watchman Charles William Keller, and Police Officer Russell M. Miller. Now I there. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emiloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim, pro gosh, proclaim May 11th through the 17th as National Police Week and May 15th as Police Officers Memorial Day. Thank you, Mayor. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> thank you, test, test. Well, thank you, Mayor, and members of the City Council for this beautiful proclamation. As you know, um, the police department here in the city of Chino considers itself the guardians of this fine community. And this year we'll be mourning on Monday, May 15th, the loss of 144 police officers across the nation who paid the ultimate sacrifice to keep our nation safe and secure. So for those of us that actually had the opportunity to work with some of these fine you know, men and women, uh, including uh, Officer Russ Miller, it's, a, it's a, uh, an honorable week for us, but it's also a very sad week as well for their families. Just in closing, I want to thank uh, the residents of the city of Chino for your support of the local police department. I can tell you that the men and women of the Chino Police Department are some of the finest professionals uh, in, in their profession, and they're very, very proud to serve you, and we couldn't do it without your support. So thank you so much for your support of them, and thank you, Mayor and Council, for this beautiful proclamation. Okay, next we have Wildfire Awareness Week. I'd like to call up Deputy Chief Scott Atkinson. Hi, Scott. Okay, whereas the Freeway Complex fire on November 15th and 16th of 2008 burned 13,304 acres of vegetation in Chino Hills State Park, 
residential and open spaces throughout Chino Hills and caused the evacuation of over 400 residents. California has had an above average year of rainfall, which has increased the growth of vegetation, increasing the threat of damaging fires and placing lives and property at risk. And whereas the combined impacts of drought and adverse forest condition across California creates dangerous wildfire conditions that can threaten the lives and property of residents of the Chino Valley, as well as endanger our delicate ecosystems. Extreme weather conditions caused by Santa Ana winds are known to increase these dangerous conditions. And whereas the key to understanding the dangers of wildfires is through education and awareness, and past experiences have demonstrated that a well-informed and prepared public can take actions to prevent fires from starting. Wildfire Awareness Week will promote the awareness and education of necessary actions and strategies to prevent wildfires and the loss of life, property, and environmental damage associated therewith. And whereas the Chino Valley Fire District, along with local government agencies and the Carbon Canyon Fire Safe Council, are prepared to assist our citizens by making our communities safer from hazards of wildfire through programs such as the Fuel Reduction Program Drop-Off and Green Waste Dumpster to Carbon Canyon residents, and declaring May 15, 2017 as the deadline for removal of all hazardous brush from the Chino Valley. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emiloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim May 7th through the 13th as Wildfire Awareness Week. And Scott, would you like to say a few words? All right. Thank you very much. It's an honor. Uh, thank you on behalf of the, our board, as well as Chief Shackelford, who couldn't be here tonight. He's back east at the National Fire Academy. Just want to thank everybody and thank the city for this proclamation. Uh, as you have heard over the years, this may be the worst wildfire season we're going to have, but truly this year we've seen a lot of growth due to the rain, so we are in preparation of that wildfire season upcoming. So it's real important that you meet that deadline here in the Chino Valley. If you do have a lot, that you have to clear those weeds by May 15th. So we ask that you due diligence to go ahead and, and make sure that you assist in uh, preparing the your lot to uh, be protect, protected from any wildfire um, events. So thank you. Thank you very much on behalf of the fire district. Thank you for being here. Chino is an exceptionally good community when it comes to helping neighbors. So perhaps if you have a neighbor that has some overgrown weeds, perhaps you can reach out and offer to help them or help them call someone who can help uh, clear that brush. <clears throat> okay, next we have National Mental Health Awareness Month. And I'd like to call up June Sano, clinical specialist with the Chino City of Chino. Kathy Ellis, President of National Alliance for Mental Illness, Chino Valley, and Jenny Mott, school nurse with the Chino Valley Unified School District. Ladies, if you'd join me up here. And we also have Dr. Terry Chase with us as well. Okay, and Dr. Cherry, Terry Chase? Yes, is joining us from Foothill Psychological Services. From Foothill Psychological Services. Come on up, doctor. <laughs> right, okay. On behalf of the citizens of Chino, we recognize the month of May 2017 as National Mental Health Awareness Month. The City of Chino, Chino Valley Unified School District, NAMI, and Healthy Chino Coalition recognize that mental health issues can affect all people. Serious mental illnesses are more common than cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. And according to the World Health Organization, one in four people develop some kind of mental illness at some point in their lives. Misunderstandings exist about many mental illnesses and our social culture often wrongly imposes stigma on these conditions. The city of Chino recognizes the importance of addressing both mental and physical health concerns as being essential to everyone's overall health and well-being. The city of Chino offers mental health services to youth, adults, and families, and the city of Chino partners with the National Alliance for Mental Illness, Chino Valley, to provide free support groups to educate, inspire, hope, and decrease the stigmas surrounding mental health issues. And whereas the City of Chino, in partnership with the Chino Valley Unified School District and the City of Chino Hills, offers several intervention and prevention programs for the youth in our community to better equip them to face life's challenges. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emiloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim May 2017 as National Mental Health Awareness Month in the City of Chino and encourage each citizen to continue to be compassionate and understanding of the importance that mental health services provide. Would you like to say a few words? 
Yes, thank you, Mayor Uloa and city council members. I've brought quite a few friends and representatives with me tonight because this is such a important proclamation and we just thank you for your awareness and your support of community services here in the city of Chino. Um, our community uh, counseling service is located across the street in the Carolyn Owens building. We offer, uh, due to the support of the city, we offer low cost counseling services to uh, individuals, families, couples, children, and we are also, uh, due to our partnership with Chino Valley School District, we are able to provide counseling services at the school sites uh, from kindergarten through 12th grade. And just shortly, I would just encourage um, the public, who we have so many people here in attendance tonight, that um, you know it's just uh, very important to be aware of our own selves and maybe sometimes when we might have um, inklings of needing a little bit of extra help due to maybe um, uh, emotions and uh, life circumstances that come our way. And so hopefully I just want to encourage you to use services that the city uh, really holds as an important uh, part of our mental and our health, overall health. I want to give a chance to uh, introduce Kathy Ellis and Jenny Mott from NAMI, who provide uh, wonderful support services for uh, mental health illness, and also Dr. Terry Chase of Foothill Psychological Services, which is right next door to the Carolyn Owens Building. So a great referral source for us. Thank you, I just wanna echo what you said. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. And I don't know if um, most of you have not heard of NAMI. Again, it's for, it stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness and we are here in the community. There is approximately 2,200 NAMIs across our nation, and we are but one, and we, um, we serve this community, and it is a pleasure to do so. And all our services, whether it is a support group or educational classes for family members who have a loved one going through a mental health issue, all of the services are free just so you know, they're all free. And the support group here in Chino is at um, in the multi-purpose room at Karen Owens on the second and fourth Monday evening from seven to nine each month, we are there. In fact, last month, someone came in in crisis and in such distress. Oh, I have music while I talk, fantastic. Um, <laughs> um, Last month, someone came in and, in crisis, and we were able to, um, to talk to that family and instruct them on what they might need to do with their son who was, who was in psychosis. And two days later, they did exactly what we asked them to do, and they called our local Chino Police Department, who came down, and I thank you so much. We have... We have collaborated before in teaching about mental health issues. And with that collaboration, this family was able to get their son to, from point A to point B, and then we took over again and made sure he had the right um, treatment, talked to the doctors, and got him to the next place uh, where it was very important to further his treatment. And that family is doing so much better. Um, just to remind you, there is no shame when we talk about mental illness. It's one in four families. Everybody here knows somebody. And it doesn't matter what uh, social status we have, gender or religion. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. It doesn't matter anything. We, as a community, as uh, human beings, we are all in this together. So um, we are here. If you, if you ever need us, and I encourage you, everybody here, to open the lines of communication with your family and talk about it. You all know somebody. Tell them about NAMI. And I'm going to have Jenny say a few words. She is my <laughs> school outreach coordinator. And uh, here you go. Thank you. Um, as a school nurse with Chino Valley Unified, um, I frequently see the ravages that mental illness can take upon our students and our families. 
Every two years, we do something called the California Healthy Kids Survey, and it looks at health risk behaviors that, that our students have, and we do it in grades 7, 9, and 11. And last spring when we did it, um, looking at just, say, our, our 11th graders, we had 31% of our 11th graders stated that they felt so sad and hopeless every day for more than two weeks. Um, so that it kept them from doing the things that they normally enjoy doing. And that's a sign of clinical depression. So that's about a third of our students. We know nationally they say one in five students has a diagnosable mental illness. So we're looking that it's probably a little bit higher than that. Um, we also, one of the questions we only ask the ninth and 11th graders is, um, have you seriously considered suicide in the last 30 days? And we had up to 17% of our 11th graders say that. So we definitely know that mental health issues affect our students and our families. Um, again, working with the, the city, with the things that we do in the schools, and with NAMI, it's fabulous because we do go into the classrooms and we provide supplemental services. We are educating our students in health science classes, but when we do the, um, the education, we can add this family perspective or the lived experience so that those of us that have loved ones or those of us that have mental health issues, we're talking of that lived experience. We really know what we're talking about. So we can go into the schools and do that. The thing I really love is going to the, um, the principals and the teachers and, and talking to them about mental health issues and what it's like. So my daughter that suffers with mental health crises comes in and talks about what things work for her in the school and what things didn't work for her. So it really gives those teachers a different perspective. So we, we know and how much a difference it makes. And again, I want to thank you know the city for all the things that we do, mayor and the city council, because your support of um, the awareness and mental health awareness week really does make a difference in helping to increase awareness and decrease stigma. So I encourage all of you, um, the, the phrase that we like to use now is if you look at mental illness, you have an I in illness, but if you replace the I with we, we have mental wellness. So. That's good. I like that. I'm, I'm Terry Chase. I'm with Foothills Psychological. We're actually the uh, largest outpatient private provider of mental health services in the community. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I thank you, Mayor. I thank you, Council. Um, and I thank all of you who are here because mental health is a, it's a big issue. It affects everyone. And I think it takes all of us working together to address it. So it takes the, the, the city, the NAMI, and then the professionals in the field who uh, provide, we have services we can offer that you don't, and you have a lot of services you can offer that we don't. So I appreciate that. Um, one of our, our big projects we've taken on together right now is trying to reduce the impact of mental health issues on the Chino Police Department. Uh, the last thing we need is for our police officers to spend four hours trying to admit a 5150 patient to Arrowhead Regional Medical Center rather than being here actually intervening and doing the things that they're, we, we really want them to do. So I appreciate uh, all of you and the opportunity to be here and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We, um, she's one of the ladies that said that we all know of someone. I think that's very, very true, whether it be a family member, a friend, a neighbor, or whatever. And I love the police department saying, if you see something, say something. Um, there are today's structure, today's culture, there are so many pressures, uh, especially on our young people. There is so much demanded of them. And, you know, everybody needs a shoulder to cry on and somebody to talk to. So. You know, NAMI's here, um, our community services people are here, so please reach out to each other if you know someone that has a need. Okay, our next proclamation is Poppy Days. I'd like to call up Sherry, uh, is it Nihan? Nihan? Uh, Poppy Chairman and members of the Chino American Auxiliary, Unit 299. Ladies, if you'd come up. Nyan, <laughs> this day always brings back fond memories to me because um, there was a lady named Lou Rorick who came to our council meetings for many, many years on Poppy Days, and she always read the poem Flanders Field, and Lou would get so emotional she would cry. I always felt so bad for her. The wonderful lady she has passed now. She's no longer with us. 
Whereas America is the land of the freedom preserved and protected willingly and freely by citizen soldiers. Millions who have answered the call to arms have died on the field of battle. A nation at peace must be reminded of the price of war and the debt owed to those who have died in war. The red poppy has been designated as a symbol of sacrifice of lives in all wars, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has pledged to remind Americans annually of this debt through the distribution of memorial flowers, now therefore I, Eunice Emiloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim the 29th day of May 2017 as Poppy Day, and ask that all citizens pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing the memorial poppy on this day. Ladies. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, my name is Sherry Nyan, and I am the Poppy Chairman of the Chino American Legion Auxiliary, Post 299. This is Betty Corum. She's our current president, and we thank you very much. We'd like to make sure that everyone on the board gets a poppy today. We will be distributing them on Memorial Day. Uh, any donation that we receive, all the monies go to support veterans and their families. So we appreciate all the men and women who have served, and especially the ones who have given in their life to make the rest of us happy and free. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here, Thank and we will you. gladly accept a poppy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Two or three of them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, next we have the uh, winner of the May Home Beautification Award. I'd like to call up Bruce and Jennifer Nimba of 6615 Olmo Court. Are you here this evening? Okay, you see a picture of their beautiful home on the monitor. Okay, and this um, certificate is pre presented, and uh, we wish to thank you for your continued improvement and maintenance of your home, resulting in a substantial contribution to the overall appearance of the community. I'd like to present you with this certificate. Um, we also have a certificate from Supervisor Kurt Hagman, recognizing you as the Mayor 2017 Award. Here's a beautiful picture of your house like to present you with a pen and pen, or pen set and city wow, um, medallion. Scored. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to get a, a second set also. And then the treasured nice. yard sign wow. announcing that you're the May 2017 winner of the Home Beautification Award. Now, who does the maintenance? We all do. Oh, listen to <laughs> Yeah, it's a group effort. I was a little worried when you were saying go to your neighbor's lot and pull up their weeds. And I thought maybe you're talking about my front yard because we've got a lot of native things just <laughs> growing out of there. I was really surprised to get this award because ours is not the typical front yard. I got sick of mowing the grass. I tore it all out, roll, rolled in about 50 boulders, and we did a low drip watering system before the droughts came, so we were forward thinking, I guess. Great. And um, so we have three apple trees in our front yard and a pomegranate tree and some planter boxes with strawberries and a grapevine that's a fence between us and the neighbors. And it's just a lot of fun. So um, thank you for that and thank you, Council. Um, I, I would like to say one thing. Um, I read in the paper that Glenn Duncan is uh, going to be stepping down and I just want to thank him for all his years of service. Oh, that's very nice of you. Very nice of you. Thank you, and congratulations. <laughs> I'm very, very proud of the fact that you converted your, your lard to drought tolerant. It's very yeah, important to conserve your water. program came out, so we didn't even cash in on any, anything from the city. But Is that retroactive? Uh, no. <laughs> but doesn't it feel good to do what's right, yeah. right? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now we have quite a group here that we're going to call up. I'd like to recognize the Chino Youth Division A basketball team, the Bruins. I'd like to call up the coaches and the members of the Bruins. If you'd come forward, please. Okay. 
to Coach Jason Guzman. Are you here, sir? Okay. I'd like to present you with this certificate of congratulations in recognition of your hard work, tremendous success, and perfect 16-0 record. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we have Coach Joe DeLeon. Same recognition. Thank you very much. And then we have Tony Contreras. Is Tony here this evening? Oh, oh okay. For all of your hard work, congratulations. Kenneth Nugent, Nugent, Kenneth, congratulations. Okay, Matthew Chang, congratulations. Benjamin Chavez, tall guy, congratulations. Justin Ramirez, congratulations. Santino Lopez, did I say that right? Santino, congratulations. Jason Guzman, God, you got your dad as a coach. That's hard, huh? <laughs> Brandon Taylor, congratulations. And Andrew Plas Plasius, congratulations. One of the coaches, would you like to explain the fabulous work of this team and how it led up to this? Well, it was actually at the last tournament. Um, I was watching the boys in the stands. And we, at that time, we were 15-0. and 0, And just the camaraderie they had, the friendship. I go, it's not the basketball skills they have that got us here. It was the, the way they were with one another. You know, they became such good friends. And that's what it was all about. And that's what we teach our boys. We're not just a basketball team. We're a family. I've been teaching here in Chino for 16 years, and uh, some of the best boys I've ever worked with standing right here in front of you. And I want to thank the City Council Fantastic. for this wonderful award. Oh, thank you. So it's much. our pleasure. Thank you thank very you so much. much. Thank you very much. Can we get a picture? Oh, can we get a picture, please, together? always like to take pictures, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please. <laughs> Can I stand by you? I don't bite. <laughs> okay. Thank you again, boys, and thank you, coaches. You're what make our community great. Patience. We had a lot of ceremonials this evening. Okay, next on the agenda is public communication. This is the time and the place for the general public to address the City Council about subjects that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. Due to Council policy and Brown Act requirements, action will not be taken on any issues that are not on the agenda. Uh, our first request to speak is Mr. Josh Collins of the Cavalry Chapel, Chino Hills, to provide an invocation. All those that are uh, interested, I invite you to stand with us for the invocation. Mayor, board members, thank you for this opportunity. Welcome. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now and we ask that you would just give the board members wisdom, discernment, as people express their heart, may hearts not get, get misin, in, misinterpreted, Lord, and may you protect our first responders, Lord, the police officers, the MNTs, Lord, and the fire departments, God, may you just protect the city, watch over it, Lord, just uh, give the council wisdom and discernment, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Josh. <coughs> Okay. 
Let's see, we have a custom here at the Chino City Council that any students that are in the audience, uh, we ask them now to come up and introduce themselves. Tell us the school you go to, your teacher, and the class that you're taking. So you have proof for your teacher that you fulfilled your duties of your class. So come forward. And there's people that are in the back. There are open seats in the front if you'd like to join and come inside. Hi, I'm Ariel Moreno. I go to Dime Bar High School, and um, I'm here for my civic class, and my teacher's name is Coach Zilstra. Okay, thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Come on, I know there's other ones in the audience. Hi, my name is Melissa, and I'm from Dime Bar High School, and I'm also here for my civics project. Okay, Alyssa, that's a long way to come from Diamond Bar. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council on any item that is not on the agenda? Let me look through these requests real quick. Oh, Mr. McCombs. Thank you, Mayor Uloa. You know, you made two statements a little earlier that really struck home with me. One was fond memories, and the other was reference to the mouse that roared. Well, 69 years ago, one of my first city editors was the man who ended up writing that book. Really? With fond memory, thank you. Interesting. But I'm here tonight to introduce a new managing editor for The Champion. I'm here on behalf of Will Fleet, who is our new CEO and owner of The Champion. And I'd like to present Aaron Tobin, who is right here. Come on up, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron's a lifelong resident of Riverside, so she hasn't been too far away from here. And uh, she's had good journalism training, both in uh, Riverside City College and at Cal State Fullerton. And then she worked for Inland Empire Magazine for many years. And now she's come to head up our newsroom. And uh, when she walked in, she probably thought she'd be here at midnight when she saw all these people. But uh, I also told her this, this is the only indoor-outdoor city council meeting in the area. <laughs> so uh, we have something unusual here. But uh, I'm sure you all get to know Erin a little later. And uh, I'm pleased to present her tonight. Well, thank you for bringing her out. Erin, would you like to say anything? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, I don't usually like to talk because I like to write, but um, I have gotten to know the city of Chino and Chino Hills while working for Inland Empire Magazine, and I know you guys have a wonderful and um, varied community here, and I'm looking forward to helping tell your stories and keep you up to date on everything that's going on. So thank you guys very much. Great. I look forward to getting to know all of you. Well, welcome, welcome to the greatest city in San Bernardino County. <laughs> I'm just an itty bit biased. Okay, next on the agenda is the consent calendar. Unless any council members wish to have an item pulled, it will be passed in its entirety. Um, I'm pulling item number five and sending it back to staff. It will come to us in the next meeting. Um, I'm also pulling item number 16 for separate action. So a motion would be appropriate on the balance of the consent calendar. Okay, there's a motion from Councilman Duncan. Uh, second from, no, I'm sorry, a motion from Count Mayor Pro Tem Howie, second from Councilman Duncan, and the balance of Councilman George. Okay, and the balance of the consent calendar passes unanimously. As I stated, item number five has been pulled and sent back. Um, I requested that item number 16, did I say eight before? I didn't mean eight. 16 be pulled. Um, this is an item that I had voted no on at the prior council meeting, and so for consistency, I will vote no on this uh, issue also. Uh, is there a staff report that is requested? 
Okay, this has to do with an annexation of property brought into the city of Chino with a zone change uh, on the residential. So I'd like to entertain a motion, or are there any questions? Motion from Councilman Duncan, second by, excuse me, by Councilman Howie. And the item passes four yes, one no, that being uh, myself. Next item on the agenda is under public hearings. Prior to the vote of the City Council, any member of the audience will have an opportunity to address the Council uh, under this public hearing. Council requests, but it's not required that you state your name and address prior to making your remarks. Item number 17 is the appeal of the Planning Commission Action, action Approval PL 16-0412 Site Approval. PL 16-0410, tentative parcel map number 19749, and PL 16-0411, PL 16-0415, and PL 16-0417, special conditional use permits. Um, I would like to call for the staff report first, please, from Mr. Warren. Oh, that's right, excuse me, but uh, prior to the staff report, Councilman Howie has an announcement. Yes, um, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm gonna have to recuse myself from this item as the applicant uh, happens to be a, a, a long time acquaintance of mine and also a also as a, my, a client in my insurance uh, business. So I've checked with legal counsel and legal counsel has advised me that I should not vote on this particular item and I'll have to recuse myself and exit uh, while this item is being discussed. So I'll do that now. Okay. Upon Councilman Howie's exit, I would like to call on uh, Mr. Warren Morleon. Morleon? Yes, ma'am. Morleon. Morellian. Oh, boy. Mor Morellian. Our city planner for a staff report, please. I apologize. No problem. I have a difficult name, so I'm used to having it butchered. So I apologize. Mine is too. Yes. Warren. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. This next item before you, if I can get the PowerPoint, please. <clears throat> this next item before you is an appeal of the Planning Commission's approval of a small 3.2 acre commercial center located at the corner of Pine Avenue and Mill Creek Avenue. To give you a little background, on October 18th, 2016, the City Council approved the general plan amendment or a general plan amendment and preserved specific plan amendment, modifying the land use designation for the project site from medium density residential to neighborhood commercial to accommodate future development of a commercial center. The only public comments brought up at the meeting related to Pine Avenue public improvements. On December 5th, 2016, the Planning Commission held a public hearing for the proposed project, which consists of a car wash located on the northeast corner of the site, depicted by that yellow tag, a uh, minor vehicle repair facility on the northwest portion of the project site, depicted by the green tag, and a, car, or a gas station slash convenience store on the south end of the site, depicted by, I think it's purple or blue tag. Total for the uh, square footage of the commercial center is approximately 11,000 square feet. Then based on questions brought up by the public at the meeting regarding vehicle and pedestrian safety at Pine Avenue and Mill Creek Avenue, which and potential noise impacts from the car wash and maintenance building facilities, the Planning Commission ended up continuing the item pending additional information from staff. On February 22nd, 2017, staff reported back to the Planning Commission. The Public Works Department relooked at the conditions of approval to determine if they needed to make any changes. Uh, the Public Works Department determined that the existing conditions were appropriate for the project and would address any potential safety concerns regarding uh, issues at that intersection or as a result of the project itself. In addition, the applicant ended up retaining the services of a second acoustical consultant to do a uh, noise analysis. Based on their evaluation, they determined that the noise from the facility all elements involved would um, would meet city noise standards. 
all, all stating your standards. <laughs> Sorry, Mayor. Staff report, please, on that matter. Ultimately, the Planning Commission approved the project with an additional condition to construct a six-foot wall along the entire north property boundary of the project. So that's depicted on the slide at the top there. And with the condition that prohibits the use of pneumatic impact wrenches on the entire site. Then on March 3rd, 2017, the city reviewed, or I'm sorry, received two appeal applications from Mrs. Shannon Daniels and Mrs. Rebecca Padilla on behalf of a number of residents in the neighborhood, appealing the Planning Commission's decision to approve the project based on three factors, increased noise impacts, increased traffic impacts, and increased negative visual impacts as, was, as a result of the project. Mrs. Daniels was also concerned about a decrease in home values, but since this wasn't brought up at the Planning Commission uh, meeting, uh, the City Council cannot act on this matter at th this evening. Staff and the applicant reviewed the three concerns from the appellants as outlined in your report, um, according to the noise analysis, again, uh, noise analysis sorry, again, uh, the project meets all city noise standards. However, as mentioned, the applicant's going to construct a six foot wall on the north end of this project site and there's a condition that limits uh, the pneumatic impact wrenches on the site. <laughs> I also want to note that based on the concerns, um, uh, from the uh, from the public regarding noise, there is a condition of approval in the project uh, itself that basically states that if there is any noise issues in the future, uh, any potential noise issues, the applicant's required to pay the cost to um, to provide a, a noise uh, um, study. So, for example, if there's a complaint for a noise issue regarding the operation. Uh, city staff can investigate, determine that a noise uh, analysis is needed, and the residents who complain do not have to pay for the noise analysis. There's a condition on the project that requires the user to pay for that analysis. So that's important to note. In terms of traffic, staff has analyzed the project and does not believe there will be a significant increase in traffic as a result of the project. And finally, the city's design review board reviewed the project and found that the project is consistent, consistent with the preserved design guidelines and re represents a high quality project. However, uh, based on the residents' concerns at the planning commission meeting, the applicant did redesign the landscape planter along the north property boundary on the inside, uh, increase the planter to accommodate the planting of a row of evergreen trees to help visually screen the property from the residents to the north. So as you can see on that screen, there's a line of trees. Those were not there before at the Planning Commission um, level. They have been introduced by the applicant to try to, again, mitigate visual impacts of the site based on residents' concerns. And these are just a couple of perspectives of the site. This is seen from Pine Avenue you can get an idea of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Convenience stores it slash gas station is the closest one to you. Uh, and then on the left, back in the back, that's the auto, minor auto repair building. And this is as seen sort of from Mill Creek. Again, gas station slash convenience store closest to you. And then on the right is the um, car wash facility, proposed car wash facility. So with that, staff recommends that the council deny the appeal of the Planning Commission's approval of the project. I would like to point out, uh, since the report was sent out to the council, staff have received a phone call from Mr. both Mr. and Mrs. Padilla concerned about the project. They stated a number of reasons why, um, including uh, that the packet itself had the resolution of, a, of denial for the appeal in it. They were concerned that that was in there and that it shouldn't have been in there because it could sway the council for uh, determining how to act on this on this item. In addition, staff received a letter from Briggs Law Firm stating that project violates the provisions of CEQA. On this one, it's important to note that the environmental um, approval 
was for this project was done back in uh, in October of last year as part of the land use amendments for the project. Remember the beginning of my long presentation, I said that there was land use amendments on October 18th. The environmental was also done at that time. So this letter from uh, Mr. Briggs, it, it's coming um, at a point where it's past the appeal timeline. And the city attorney can add to that if he wishes after my presentation. Oh, I should say, so therefore the council can act on the, on the item tonight and not worry about the letter. I'm almost there. Oh, I also want to point out that the applicants here with the uh, consultant team there to help answer any questions you may have, and that concludes my presentation. Okay. Um, prior to questions of staff, I'm going to declare the public hearing open. I'd like to first give the I may, Madam Mayor, before yes, uh, you do so, if I may just provide a few extra details. Sure. Thank you. My apologies for interrupting. No, that's okay. Um, as staff has indicated, a letter did come in from the Briggs Cor uh, Law Corporation. It was dated May 1st, 2017. The city received it today, May 2nd. The letter does raise a whole host of issues predominantly focused on uh, alleged uh, noncompliance with CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, a few points to, to reference, the, as, as staff has explained, the council did approve the environmental uh, review of this particular item back in October of 2016. The time to challenge a CEQA determination, and, a, and that determination is documented through what's called a Notice of Determination, NOD, that was filed on um, uh, October 5th, 2016. The time to challenge that starts from that filing and goes 30 days later. So uh, that would take it into November, November 6th, and uh, the city did not received, receive any challenge to that environmental determination. So we believe that is uh, beyond the statute of limitations to challenge any CEQA determination. There was uh, no other challenge filed within that 30-day period of uh, October 5th, 2016. The issues raised in the Briggs law firm letter, uh, including CEQA, were also not raised at the Planning Commission level. Um, the Chino Municipal Code at section 20.23.150 B1 requires that any issues that are raised on appeal have to be issues that were presented to the Planning Commission initially so that uh, if they were not raised at that time at the Planning Commission level, raising them for the first time before this body, the, the City Council, is inappropriate per your municipal code provisions. So those, uh, those issues raised now would fail for what's called failure to exhaust administrative remedies. And uh, finally, as, as I mentioned, there was no uh, other documentation filed by the Briggs Law Firm at the Planning Commission level. They did not, it did not appeal the Planning Commission level. As was mentioned by staff, the appellants were different parties. So the Briggs Law Firm did not preserve the rights to raise the issues that they have raised in their May 1st letter. That letter is a public record. The notice of, of determination is also a public record and will be part of the record of this proceeding. That concludes my comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Galante. Okay, again, I'll declare the public hearing here open. Um, I would like to give the applicant an opportunity to speak, followed by the uh, two people that have filed the appeal, and then the rest of the public comments. <coughs> Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the uh, City Council. My name is Walt Mitchell, and I'm a uh, project manager with Lewis Retail uh, Centers. We've been working on this project for probably about a year and a half with planning staff. Uh, we've done everything from a developer 101 that we met with the public. We've been through numerous rounds of uh, design review process with city staff. Uh, we've had the planning commission meeting um, where the project has been processed. Um, and we've worked through a number of issues with staff and what you have before you tonight is uh, what the Planning Commission has approved along with what Warren had detailed uh, that we <coughs> have seen the, the request uh, from one of the um, uh, people that are appealing the approval and we've added a row of trees along the north property line 
uh, about 39 to 40 of them along that north side. So we feel that we're trying to do whatever we can to listen to what the concerns are, but still be able to fall within the city's design guidelines and noise ordinances. We feel that we've put together a project that complies with all of the city's codes, design requirements, noise ordinances has been studied in depth, and um, and we appreciate would appreciate your vote tonight to deny the appeal and to allow us to move this project forward. Uh, <clears throat> tonight we have rep representatives here from uh, 7-Eleven, uh, from All American Car Wash, uh, from PlaceWorks Environmental, who is one of the largest environmental uh, engineering firms in California who prepared the noise study that can answer any of your questions. Um, so, and along with uh, the manufacturer of the car wash equipment, Tommy Car Wash is representative is here this evening that can answer any of your questions. So we look forward to moving this project forward and, and, um, and with, your, um, with your support and denying the motion for appeal. And so we can move this project forward. And we're all here to answer whatever questions we feel we've done uh, what we need to do to make this compliant uh, within everything and bring the city three new businesses. Uh, the All-American Car Wash is a local Chino business, and, um, and we look forward to bringing this project forward. Okay, are there any uh, questions of the applicant? I'd like to uh, talk to the sound guy okay. who did the sound um, study. The noise? Noise, yeah. Okay, well, let me introduce Mr. Bob Manti with uh, PlaceWorks. I just have a quick question. Uh, they've added the trees and they've added the wall. Yes. Does that make a difference on your study? Was it? The, the, tr the wall was included in the study. Okay. Um, and we conservatively did the minimum amount of barrier attenu attenuation for that wall. The trees were not included in the study because they wouldn't make one difference one way or the other. So that's a, that's a neutral aspect. That's okay. Yeah, I was from, from an acoustic standpoint. Yeah, that's what I, I didn't know if it helped or not. So thank you. You're welcome. Wait, I have a one. Mr. George. The, um, the decibel level, let's say you're 20 feet away uh, at the vacuum, where the vacuums are. Mm -hmm. What is the decibel level there, and what's the decibel level at the 300 feet, uh, th the 300 feet where the uh, homes are, the residences are? I'm going to have to refer to my own report. Yeah. I, I assume you all have a copy of it. Uh huh. Okay. Well, yeah, but I, you know, it's easier for you to get it than to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you're just talking about the vacuum systems, right? At the north receptor area, across across the transmission line, just the vacuums were predicted to be 41 and a half dBA. And that's on page 17. And on page 13, the vacuums would be approximately 82 dBA at, at 10 feet. Okay. So in the immediate vicinity, they would be 82, but by the time you got past the wall and the distance, they'd be around 42. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm a little confused. Is it vacuum noise we're talking about there, or is it the when they blow off the cars? That's just the vacuum noise. Okay. I'm, I'm addressing. Yeah, the, my, know, the, my the, question was just the vacuum. Yeah, but doesn't what about the uh, vacuums aren't as loud as the blowers that blow off the water on the car wash, right? That is true. Okay, so what would that? But I was to? I was focusing on. Yeah, on I understand. Vacuums. Okay, I understand. I'm just trying to figure out. Okay. You know, if we go to over our percentage or not. So I don't know, but it, it takes what? care of what we we demanded. Yes. Okay. What are the noise levels of the blowers? At what what location? Same references. Okay. George. Page thirteen and page seventeen, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> 
just just to qualify and, and explain another conservative aspect of, of our analysis, we applied the noise levels for the blowers at both ends of the tunnel. Okay. Now that's a little bit, I won't say ridiculous, but it's, it's very conservative in that the blower noise is not going to be coming out of, of the tunnel entrance. You're, you're going to get water spray noise, you're going to get um, you know, the, the, the pre-washing noise equipment, but we conservatively put that loud source at both ends of the tunnel. So um, with that qualification, the tunnel entrance, because of the canting and because it's more exposed to the northern people, it was projected to be 40 dBA, and the tunnel exit was projected to be 38. Those are independent you know, the, on, on the total, it's 46 with all the sources. And again, we, we conservatively looked at all 20 vacuum stations being used simultaneously and a continuous flow going through the car wash. So everything that could be happening at the facility, we accounted for as if it were happening all at once, which again is probably highly unlikely, but Again, for conservatism, that's, that's how we approached it. So this is truly a, a, a worse case. So it's, so it's 40 at the end of the tunnels. Well, what did you ask how far it was? I mean, at the, at the home? It's, no, it's 40 at the, at the receptors on the other side, at, on the north side of the transmission line. So about the same as the vacuum system. <coughs> yes. Any other questions, Mr. Manti? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other input from the applicant? <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Sam Souza. I'm a lifelong Chino resident, born and raised in the city of Chino, currently in the dairy business in Chino. We moved to the preserve in 2013. Uh, I got into the self-serve car wash business in 2009. Upon looking into the express model, found this site that Lewis had right down the street from my house. I live on the corner of uh, Bickmore and Mill Creek, just a couple blocks away from the car wash facility. Kids go to school there, and so we thought it would be a great option to build something in the local community, you know, down the street from our house. So we would like to, at this time, thank the City of Chino staff and Planning Commission for all your hard work, especially the members that came out to the sites and seen it in person. Uh, when you see this facility in person, you really understand the, the, the dynamics of the facility. With the neighboring neighborhood community in mind, we've added some extra measures that are a little different from the Hemet location. If anybody's been to the Hemet location, the drying system was right at the back door of the tunnel. We have moved the dryers 10 feet inside the tunnel to dampen the noise even more than what was shown at the Hemet location. Uh, we've gone with the quietest vacuum or blower system in the industry. It's called the aero dry system. Uh, they have an actual fan, so it's not the big squirrel loud fans that are on there. Everything's encapsulated into a big tube. Uh, we, uh, this facility is also built with a very tall roof with mousetrap style openings to keep the noise inside of the facility. And then when we went to the vacuum system, if you went to him and seen him, each individual vacuum stall has a motor outside on the vacuum unit. We went with the central vac system where the vacuum producer is inside the equipment room building with the pipes run underground to the producer. So the only thing that's outside is the nozzles. There's no motors. There's nothing outside of uh, the facility to, to create extra noise. So. Uh, in conclusion, we believe that we have picked the quietest blowers and vacuum system available in the industry today. We also believe that we're fully compliant with all the City of Chino's noise requirements. As shown in the noise study provided, we meet the standards of the City of Chino noise ordinance. And thank you for taking all these factors in consideration upon approval of our American Express wash. Thank you, Mr. Sousa. Any questions? Yeah, I do. Mr. Elrod? Yeah, uh, I've been talking to staff and I evidently you've been talking to them too about the color of the facility. Uh, toning it down a little bit. Yep. Can you agree to that? Yeah, we're going to go more earth tones. Earth tones. We okay. haven't gone over the colors, but some of the rendering show some browns and something that matches the whole preserve community. These aren't the colors? No. 
we haven't officially picked this is what staff kind of came up with but we haven't fixed the exact you know palette of color we're going to use but they're all earth tones what we're going to use is that correct so this is not your typical what we think of a car wash where everybody's hand drying and, no. and doing all that you is it like a club I th I, we've had you one. can buy wash pass club right. with an rfid chip you can right. come in the gate opens you don't have to talk to anybody you stay in your car it pulls you through in about two minutes and you can go out the driveway and hit the road we use spot free water so your car won't spot up or you can pull around to one of the self-serve 20 vacuum stations you can vacuum your car out there is some vending stuff you can dry it if you like but it's more of a self-serve Oh. model where there's only be about three employees on the site at all times three to four employees is this the same one that's in bakersfield or yeah there's a cru cruise through in bakersfield there's yeah. 10 of them that's the same kind of idea and concept as where this came from there's also one getting there's one in anaheim there's one getting built in orange one getting built in menifee one getting built in fontana it's a chain out of the role about 50 of these car washes coming to california wow and brian can answer more information he's the rep from tommy's if you guys have any other questions about the system is this open 24 hours a day no it's open uh we got hours right now from 7 to 9 p.m so it's not open 24 hours it'll be secured with roll-up doors and closed down and the place will be locked up and out of business any other questions yes the um <coughs> Yeah, I'm going to go. I want to go back to the colors. Now, the um, we were invited to look at a couple of car washes, Hammett and Fullerton, yeah. uh, down on Euclid. Yes. So these definitely will not be the colors no. that are on Euclid. They told us from day one they will not let us do red. Yeah, because that's a little garish down there. I mean, yeah. I realize where it's sitting in in Fullerton is not that big a deal. Yeah. But where it's going to be sitting here. No, we're going to go window. with the earth tone colors. Like those are going to be some of the colors. We haven't actually picked the exact color, but the city wants us to use the earth tones. And that includes the. Uh, the uh, the tarp or the whatever that uh, the canopy on canopy, top yeah. will be that clear color because it's an acrylic yeah. so it lets the natural light into the car wash tunnel okay one and i have one more question i don't know who wants to answer it but on the uh the lighting uh and i, I think that's I'm, I'm sure that's in our report too and I've, i think i've seen it but i just want to make sure the lighting is all shielded so nothing goes into the neighborhood or it's all just directly yeah um, there's a whole light study was already done it's in uh, i believe one of the reports we have and it's all shielded and with the neighborhood mine with shields and everything on and walt might be able to answer that better if you, oh, you just answered it so oh. yeah it's, it's all led been reviewed was part of the uh, the wood candle study was part of our application all right thank you any other questions of the applicant okay thank you mr Sousa. thank you Okay, next I would like to call on the two people appealing. First, uh, Shannon Daniels. Good evening, my name is Shannon Daniels. Um, I understand I have five minutes, is that correct? So uh, you will have the same amount of time that I just provided the applicants. Okay, well, I'll, I'll first begin by providing you um, with some noise that comes from the Hemet location. I understand that they're saying it's 40 so many feet out. Um, I stood on an adjacent property away from their Hemet location and everything's in the high 60s and 70s. This is it. So to say that it's in the 40s, my backyard currently, the way it sits in my backyard, that's a 40. So you'll hear a bird chirp and that'll take you to 42, but that, their product and their car wash is in the 70s, period. It's, it's ridiculous. Yes, they have a high ceiling. The noise comes out the top. Um, there's venting along the top. Uh, we were also brought out to the Hemet location. We were told that the hours, I've never heard 7 to 9 p.m. That's insane. This is 250 feet from my daughter's bedroom. Um, there are two and three-story homes that sit 
250 feet and 125 feet to the east. No, no one even discusses the 125 feet um, away. That is from their tunnel to the nearest <coughs> residence on the opposite side of Mill Creek. Um, this is not a sound wall. This is a six foot wall. This is not a sound wall. This will not help with two and three story homes. It is not a sound wall. Um, and I'd like to bring up something that I heard tonight about the planning commission meeting that it wasn't brought up about property value and I beg to differ because I came here and after I spoke, I was then told that they've invested a lot of money into this and that um, blah, 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 blah. They've invested a lot of money. I then said that we've invested a lot of money and we don't own businesses. We put our money into this home that I purchased on January 28th of 2016. I was told this property was future residential. The people that are in the north that are having their DR Horton problem, we would gladly take that problem we're dealing with a noisy car wash, not too many homes, too little homes, too much land, no land. We're dealing with actual noise. My backyard is peaceful right now. It is quiet. There is no noise. A residential, my, I, I said it in another meeting, my block wall is three feet 11 inches tall. Above that is just a wrought iron decorative fence. They put my wall in with the intention of that being a residential. Had they n n called that or renamed that or rezoned that a commercial automotive, so louder than commercial, <coughs> they, wouldn't, they would have given me a six foot wall, not a three foot 11 wall. Um, so back to property values. Yes, I do believe in the planning commission in one of the original planning commission meetings, it was an issue because the dollar that they have invested or the amount of monies that they have, have invested was brought up. And I said, but that goes for us too. We all bought these homes. It's still in the preserve um, showroom shows that that's future residential. It's like a total bait and switch here. Um, so I think that that can still be an issue. Um, as I stated before in the last meeting, we already have a car wash in the preserve. We already have a gas station in, in the preserve. Those are the only two businesses that we have in the preserve is a car wash and a gas station. And now we're going to do it again on this corner. I'd also like to say in that 3D rendering that was up, that's quite a large intersection that's displayed in that. That is not accurate whatsoever to the circumstance or the situation that sits there at this time. That is nothing like what we have there. These are small little streets. That's how you get from the tunnel to the nearest residence is 125 feet because that's not two, two lanes going each direction or however that rendering is inaccurate. Um, I discussed that the wall um, in the neighborhood, I, I have issues. They have a wall, the six foot wall that's not a sound wall. They have an opening and with uh, a walkway. So when you go to 7-Eleven or you rob the 7-Eleven, you can bolt into the neighborhood. And I'm not kidding. I work in law enforcement. I see it every day. They're going to run into the community. It, it, the gate's open for them. Why would you run down Pine? There's, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to hide. Um, so noise is an issue, property value, unsightly, traffic issues. If you look at the, the, the um, picture there, I was informed that to go to the church, you've got to go right there, right behind the car wash. They're leaving a fire access. <laughs> To go to the church. This is just not, it, it's not well thought out. It's, it's a corner where if you're coming from the residence on the northeast corner of Pine and Mill Creek, those residents will pull out of their track and make a left or 
straight across is the driveway to enter into the car wash. It's like, it's crazy. It is, there is not room for this type of activity there. 20, there's 20 um, uh, vacuums. Go, they're five dollars or something six dollars for this car wash and you vacuum out your car you listen to your music as loud as you want your alarm goes off you've had your door open too long all this commotion right close 250 or 125 feet depending if you're looking to the east or the north um, so traffic is an issue and safety is the biggest issue um, that's all. I, I, I really hope that you will hear from the residents that live closest. I understand people want business in the area. I would be happy to walk over for a coffee shop, donut shop, uh, pizza, sh pizza, any of the above. But a car wash is loud. The hours I hear are growing. That's insane. Um, we bought these homes. We were <coughs> told this was a uh, future residential, not a car. I would have never bought, first of all, I would have never bought in that location, which would have never, I would have never bought in the city of Chino. So I, I really, really, really hope that you will listen to the residents that live touching this property um, and that have to live there. None of these business owners, none of the people that are gonna make the money, None of the people that are, or for the most part, the people that, well, I can guarantee you, no one that lives along there will utilize this facility. Sure, deeper in, streets in, maybe they will. But those of us that have to listen to it every single day and every single night, and we don't work from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 9 p.m., unfortunately, we work throughout the night. Our hours are all over the board. And that's not just for my household, that's for approximately 10 neighbors that I know for sure do not have nine to five jobs. They work through the night. Law enforcement, you don't get to be work nine to five. That's just not how it works. So I really, really hope that you will consider um, the residents that touch this property that sits so close and that it will affect and it doesn't affect my pocketbook. I'm, I, I was told by a, a real estate agent that our track, our track is paying the highest property tax in the entire preserve. So $12,000 I paid last year and I'm gonna have to sit and listen to a car wash in my backyard, worse, in my bedroom while the window's closed. So I, I really, really plead that you listen to the residents that are closely affected. Thank you. Okay, the next um, appellant is Rebecca Padilla. Are you there, Rebecca? Rebecca Padilla? Good evening, Madam Mayor and council members. Thank you for hearing our appeal and um, I wanted to bring up, first of all, because it was a point that was made, that at the, uh, the city planning meeting where this was passed, that property values were never mentioned. It was never brought up, and so now we don't have the right to bring it up. That's absolutely false. There were 12 of us who spoke against this project. Probably at least five of us mentioned property values and that our concerns about what this, these types of businesses put in right in our backyards could do to our property <coughs> values. I personally mentioned pro my concern about property values. So the fact that it's being said by the city based on their notes that um, that was never mentioned, that's false. We absolutely mentioned that. I'm not quite sure why that even matters. Honestly, whether we brought it up or we didn't bring it up, the fact is that we, we're here tonight to um, present to the council something that has not been built yet in this city and whatever valid arguments we can bring to, to including whatever this loss, lawsuit letter is that was brought up saying that it's, if they have a valid argument as to why this, there's something with CEQA or whatever that's not valid, then 
if it's not valid, it's not valid. Whether 30 days has passed or not, I would think that the council members would still be concerned about something that, that does not comply, um, whatever that, I, I didn't have time to read through that um, lawsuit um, or lawyer letter. But anyways, um, I have some photos here. I know I had sent each of you emails um, after we filed our appeal and invited you to come to my home. <laughs> None of you knocked on my front door. No, I was there. What's that? By your house and her house. Well, I, thank you for coming. I, I would have I would have been happy to host you in my backyard. Um, but anyways, I did bring some packets here that I want to go over. I have five of them. Um, I don't know who Get wants to, to take the, them. Uh, city clerk and she'll pass them out. Okay, the, the very first one is a picture that I just took today. I went down to the park house and they have a site plan huge it's massive and it has the entire preserve on this plan and this photo was just taken today with my cell phone and as you can see the site plan in the park house representing the preserve still lists this property as future residential it still has not been changed and amended to reflect to anybody who walks in there even because they're still selling homes in the preserve. And so they're still advertising that this site is future residential to this day, okay? That's where my argument starts, is that we were deceived by Lewis Corporation. And he, he intended, as they say, they've been working on this project for years. Well, they only just rezoned it in October. When we closed on our home 22 months ago, um, nearly two years ago, June, well, 23 months ago now, we closed in June. Um, we were told that those were gonna be homes that were built over there. That's why our, as Shannon pointed out, our wall is a three foot, 11 inch wall with a cute little wrought iron. And some of these pictures in here, which I'll be referring to, show that wall very clearly. So you can see from my, what my, what everything looks like right from my backyard. Um, the reason the builder put that is because the builder was under the impression that residential was going to be going in across the easement. And so everything was supposed to be decorative and everybody was supposed to look into this beautiful green space, which we didn't get much of a green space because everything's drought conscious now, but it looks more like a <clears throat> field of weeds. But the whole point was to that there wasn't, they didn't put up six foot walls like they do up on Bickmore. Uh, where there's traffic noise and other noise. They put in decorative walls because there was never an intention for the builder to have to build anything for commercial businesses across the way. So this hoax was kept up all the way until all the homes along the easement were sold. And that's when they invited the public to come in, to the park house to start discussions of rezoning. Even though months prior to that, they were already recruiting businesses and merchants online to take those spots once they rezoned that property. So we feel very adamantly that this was a deception on the part of Lewis Corporation to get those homes sold at the top, top dollar and then come swoop in and change it so that he could make it something that was more, uh, uh, I don't know, just to be able to make more, um, money or whatever it may be. I understand it's a small lot and that maybe getting a home buyer or a builder to come in there and, and build homes in that area. I don't know what the reason is why he changed his mind or at what point along the line he changed his line. I've heard rumors that, he, that it was decided 10 years ago that that would be flipped to um, commercial. So why he's taken so long and waited until homes along the easement were sold, only he could probably answer that. Um, but you can tell that we're all very frustrated by that. We were, we were lied to, we bought those homes thinking that, honestly, my husband and I, we felt like having homes come in there, two-story homes, would buffer the noise coming from, any noise potentially coming from Pine Avenue, and um, any noise coming from the prison, and any of those views as well. And so we were excited about having homes being built on that property because we would still be able to retain our mountain views far off in the distance 
without having um, without ha having to see Pine Avenue and to see the, the women's prison, which is just across the way. So um, we, we're really losing a lot by this being turned into now commercial and, um, and taking on a whole different view, vantage point from our uh, two-story home. Um, anyways, going back to those pictures, as, as you can see, these are pictures from my backyard looking onto the site. I, I tried to label them so that you could see exactly what we're looking at because I understand it's hard to tell in a, in a photo. Um, the very last couple pages, I actually took the picture on page six, standing on the site itself through the chain link fence looking back at my house. Um, you can see this site where, where you see the, the brown um, mowed down area, that's the actual proposed site for the car wash. And um, that line along there where, those, where the shrubbery is, that's part of the easement. So that's where the wall would be put. Now, you have to remember, first of all, it was said that the six-foot wall, I, I believe you guys are under the misunderstanding that the six-foot wall was just put in at the last commission meeting. That's not true. That's not true. The wall has always been planned to be there, the six-foot wall. What had been proposed at that meeting was to raise it to eight feet and somebody came up here and said that two feet higher wouldn't make any difference. And so the, the, one of the commissioners, uh, planning commissioners actually just kind of waved his hand away on that and said, we don't need to do that. Let's keep it at six foot. Let's vote on this. So nothing changed. Nothing was added as far as the wall. It has always been planned to be a six foot decorative wall. And I must add, this wall steps down. It steps down to four feet. And then it steps down to three feet for visibility reasons at Mill Creek Avenue. The car wash tunnel, the way it, it, if you saw that picture again, it goes at an angle. The car wash tunnel is going to be heading straight for the lowest part of the wall, the three foot and four foot part of the wall. And my house is just beyond the short part of the wall, not the six foot part, but the four foot and the three foot part. So any type of hope for any sound barrier from from this wall I mean sounds gonna go right around it anyways because I live on the very first cul-de-sac off of Mill Creek um, so that's really important to point out uh, also my the the windows that overlook the car wash on um, the south side of my house are my ba my bedroom windows and my son's bedroom windows uh, I have the very last page I know you guys are probably wondering what that picture is for this is um, a picture from my bedroom window. You can actually see in the picture, there's, uh, you can tell it's taken through a screen. Um, and there's a little tiny tractor out there mowing the, um, the property. Two days after the planning commission meeting when this was approved, um, they, they had, according to the documents which I read, all 555 pages of, um, they had 10 days to mow down the property, which they did two days later. And I recorded the sound of that tractor on the property, just the tractor. That's all that was running. I recorded it from my bedroom window. And um, so I wanted to play that for you. This is what I heard in my bedroom. It actually woke me up. And this is just one little tractor on that corner mowing the lawn. So this is what I can hear in my bedroom. And if you listen really close to every once in a while, you can hear a bird chirp. But, <coughs> if I can get my phone to shut off. My point, my point is, is that we are not far enough away to not be affected by the noise of these businesses. And I'm not just talking about the car wash. I'm talking about the gas stations, the cars idling, coming in and out, the traffic, the traffic that's going to pass in the alleyway behind the car wash to get to the church, uh, the quick loop shop, and the cars that are being worked on with wide open garage doors. Um, all of this, all added together, uh, just floating right over those walls, right up to our second story window. And so I wanted to. Um, play that for you just so you'd have some idea that 
we can hear what's happening on that corner. And the, the more things that you put on that corner, the more traffic that you're asking to come into that location, the more you're going to be able to hear it. So that's what you get from one tractor. I, took, I, I wanted to show you the picture so that you could see it. It wasn't some big, huge monstrosity. It was just a little tractor pulling a little thing behind it, mowing down the lawn. Um, one of the other issues that I wanted to raise is Pine Avenue. And Shannon mentioned the safety. I know it's been talked about, about the intersection, pedestrian crossing, so on and so forth. And the city felt it wasn't necessary to change the infrastructure for this project. Um, they've had people out there to look at it. They feel it's fine the way it is. They seem to think people are going to obey the traffic laws and not cross a double yellow line to turn left going eastward bound on Pine Avenue into the 7-Eleven. I can tell you for a fact it's going to happen all the time because it, it happens all the time at a little business. Um, just down the way in between Euclid and Meadow House Avenue. Um, it's called Lizzie's, uh, Lizzie's Custom Processing Market. It's a little market that sells goat meat and cow meat and so on and so forth. And cars coming from Euclid Avenue head in eastbound. They stop there to turn left across to double yellow and they people have to slam on their brakes and it backs up traffic all the way to Euclid Avenue so that they can turn into Lizzie's Custom processing market. So I can guarantee if they're stopping th and turning illegally into Lizzie's processing market, they're most certainly going to be making that illegal left turn across the double yellow to come into a 7-Eleven gas station. And you're going to have, you're coming out of Death Alley, and I'm forgive me for calling it that, but you guys, one of the things on your agenda tonight is a lawsuit against the city by Lewis Corp for an accident that happened with five fatalities, guess where that accident happened? It happened right in front of this property that we're talking about. That is a very narrow road on Pine Avenue. People speed through there. Nothing law enforcement has done has stopped it. Uh, there's, you know, the signs up saying reduce your speed and everything else, but people fly across Pine Avenue and there's lots of traffic in the morning. It's backed up sometimes clear, clear to Mill Creek with traffic trying to exit the preserve to get to work, and it's, ba it's backed up coming the opposite way in the evenings. Um, I don't know necessarily if the city people go out during those times, but things get bad and traffic stops very suddenly. Putting in these types of businesses is gonna increase those types of potential problems and those fender benders, fatalities, um, problems with, with you know, all of this traffic. Never once has it been mentioned that the road should be widened before commercial businesses are put in. And I just think that that is nonsensical. The fact that you would want to put commercial businesses that will increase traffic. Now, now people who would normally leave the preserve through Bickmore and Kimball Avenue are going to filter down to Pine Avenue and increase the traffic <coughs> on Pine Avenue because they want to come get gas or they want to come get their car washed or they want to stop at the Mini Mart. So it's going to create more traffic on Pine Avenue, which is already a very serious problem, which I know the city is aware of, because there's propositions to, increase, to, to widen Pine Avenue in the future, to take it all the way through to the 71. But none of that is part of the, the requirements for this um, project. And I, I can't possibly see how the city, in um, good faith, could recommend anything to add to the traffic along Pine Avenue um, like this, these commercial businesses would with, without widening that road, taking away the K-rails so that you have an emergency lane, so that you have somewhere to go if somebody slams on their brakes. Because right now, if you drive across that section between Meadowhouse and Mill Creek, there's flowers lining the road where people have died. So I just want to make you all fully aware of all of the ramifications of what's going to happen. Um, with these businesses coming in. And again, we filed two separate appeals. Uh, one of them was just asking you to overturn the decision altogether. Um, we appeal to you. We pray that you'll do what's right and just and fair. Uh, we have, we, I prepared the other appeal separately for the reason that if ultimately you decide to proceed with this project, um, 
we do have some things that th they're not solutions what they are is concessions and so we brought those to light because and and as uh, the Lewis representative mentioned already they have seen that list and they did add trees um, what we were hoping for was trees on the easement side of the property so not only do they buffer sound but we have something more pleasant to look at than an eight-foot sound wall which is what we're also asking for is an eight-foot sound wall at the Planning Commission meeting, the repre same representative for Lewis Corporation actually said they're fine with increasing the wall from six feet to eight feet. That was brought up and shot down by a, commi a planning commissioner. Um, so they already offered to increase the wall to eight feet once. Um, what, what hasn't been brought up is the difference between a decorative wall and a sound wall. And what we're asking for is a sound wall. Uh, what, at eight feet. We're also asking that there not be, as Shannon mentioned, any openings, not only to keep riffraff from crossing through into our neighborhoods, but also to keep foot traffic from funneling down th through our streets to get to those um, amenities, uh, convenience store, so on and so forth. Um, you know, we're, we have a pretty tight neighborhood and we like to watch out for what's going on in the neighborhood. And if we have a whole bunch of teenagers and who, whoever, uh, children walking down through the streets that don't really belong there and are just taking shortcuts to cut through the easement to, into the, into, to get to the mini mart to buy candy or whatever. I mean, obviously that's foot tra traffic that our, us, our, us and our neighbors, we don't, we don't want all that extra, those extra potential people that could be messing with our properties um, coming through uh, there. So we're asking that those openings in the wall be closed um, and then also if there's any way to amend the hours um, where maybe it's not starting up at 7 a.m. <coughs> while people are still potentially sleeping and not closing down until whatever it was, 8 or 9 p.m., but maybe a little bit sooner so that we can enjoy a more peaceful evening. Um, I'm, not in any way, I'm not in any way giving up by asking for these concessions. I'm just being practical because we were kind of blindsided at the, the planning commission meeting when when we all got up here and emotionally spoke from our hearts and and then it was just everything was shot down and we felt like we had no recourse so i honestly would love for you to deny the entire project and ask lewis to go back to the drawing board and find something that's more suitable for quiet residential um so that that would be a that would be a, a compromise right there because we didn't fight this back when it was being rezoned because we were honestly led to believe that there would be some quieter businesses. They would beautify everything. I mean, we, we, they kind of lulled us into a false sense of security. So um, unfortunately, we trusted in that and we let this go further than we would have liked it to have gone. And once we did come and voice our opinions, by that time, it seemed like it was a steamroller and we had a hard time getting it to slow down. So here we are. Uh, I think that's everything. Thank you for listening. I really, really do appreciate your time. Are there any questions of Mrs. Padilla? Yes. Mr. George. The, um, just a couple of, uh, some clarification. Sure. You, um, the October 2016 meeting that Lewis held for the yep. community, uh, and you received notification of that in September of 2016, you, and you did attend both. Well, I, for, as for both of you and Mrs. Dan, Ms. Daniels, you both attended those those uh, that that meeting. No, no. the the meet the meeting that w that I attended was at the Park House, and it was back in the I don't know the exact date, but it was it was back probably last summer sometime. Um, the October date is when they came and asked the city to rezone, and I was not, I was not at that meeting. Um, honestly, and the reason I didn't come to that meeting is because at the Park House, they had answered all of our questions and reassured us and made us feel like they were doing, you know, they were gonna bring businesses, maybe a, a fast food or something, you know, something, <clears throat> um, you know, people have mentioned coffee shops, pizza restaurants, we, we kind of felt, it was mentioned that there could possibly be a gas station um, with a, you know, the gas stations that have the fast food part to it. 
Um, those were all things that were brought up. At the time, no specific businesses were mentioned. Um, we had no idea they already had merchants lined up. Um, they kind of made it sound like it was going to be less comical than what ended up coming out in the end. Um, we walked away from that. And, and yes, yeah, Shannon Daniels was at the Park House meeting also. We, we both were there. There was a lot of community members there. People were asking for dog parks. People were asking for all sorts of things at that meeting. Uh, Lewis representatives and city representatives were there reassuring us that everything would be beautiful and we were concerned about, you know, that whatever they put in there, we wanted to make sure that there was a tall enough wall and beautification along our side of the wall so that what we had to look at wasn't just a wall, but some beautiful trees or something. We were reassured that all of that would be done. Now we're being told nothing is going to happen on our side of the wall. Um, what's already there, which you can see in those pictures, those little shrubs, they're like stick trees. The uh, Lewis representative knows the actual name of those trees, but um, they're deciduous, they drop their leaves, they, um, so they're literally sticks the majority of the year. Right now they're, they're blooming, so there's a few leaves on them, but they're literally like shrubs. They're not even, I wouldn't, I mean, yes, I think technically they're trees, but they look more like shrubs, and they're never gonna be allowed to grow past, I believe, 15 feet or something like that. Um, they, they're, they're not gonna cover much of that wall. That's, that's all we have to look at. And so the things that we were kind of reassured would happen, obviously, then we find out this huge project with a full-fledged car wash right on the easement line. And I mean, it kind of developed over time. So I was, I was not at the October meeting when rezoning the property was discussed. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question of staff. Yeah. Uh, yes. On the uh, uh, openings in the wall in the back, what was the reasoning for that? Uh, typically in the preserve, um, we like to uh, promote connectivity. So one of the thoughts was to have a connection into the easement to allow residents to connect not along just the sidewalks along streets, but also through the communities. So that's the reason it was planned there. Can they be closed? Yes, ma'am, they can. Thank you. And I have a question for Seth. The, the, these uh, 39 trees that are being planted, because uh, you mentioned, so I want to make sure they're in, the, that they're in the place I think they're going. Are these, number one, are these mature trees? And number two, um, are they along the, uh, are they buffering along the? Uh, the wall, right? Yeah, the, the, the wall North between. North wall. Yeah, yeah, the north side, the north wall. They're not on the easement side of the property. They're going to be, because my understanding, for Warren, what he explained to me on the phone yesterday was that putting anything else on the easement would take approv approval from SCE, oh, from boy. Edison. And so that's a whole different process. So I believe Lewis is trying to stay off the easement altogether, and they don't even want to mess with it. Okay, then I'm sorry. Where, where are these trees going then? Yes, sir. They're on the inside of the wall, the project side of the wall. They are 15-gallon podocarpus trees, so they're evergreen trees, and the statistics on those are about, at planting, seven to eight feet high. And then it looks like, what I've been told, is in about five years they get as high as 15 or so feet. So um, they'll be over the six-foot wall initially, barely, but then they'll grow into, into bigger trees. That's what's proposed. Okay. I have podocarpus on my property. They're, they're stick trees, too. I have podocarpus, and they're not. Thank you. OK, we have a number of requests to speak. Um, because I have given um, as much time as the applicant uh, and the uh, appellants wanted to speak to address their issues, I'm going to ask the rest of you to please control or contain your uh, comments, please, to five minutes if possible. If you have an issue that most of you support, if you could ask those in attendance that agree with you to stand so that we get a feel of the people that are here and, and what your desires are, it would be appreciated. Um, the next written request I actually have to speak is Mr. Padilla. And if you could bring out anything unique, please, sir. Good evening. I'm Daniel Padilla. I appreciate your time. Um, 
I know some things were mentioned about the CEQA with an attorney. I, I was actually looking at stuff like, at, like that earlier today. Um, I did notice that in the NOD for the state of California, it does say that in the determination that this project will have a significant impact on the environment. Whereas in the amendment from staff, it says this project will not have a significant or a impact on the environment. So those things differ and I'm not sure why. Um, and I tried to get clarification on some of that earlier, but I couldn't really get good answers to my questions. Um, what I did do is in looking at what CEQA looks at and looking at what staff presented to you for the amendment, they go down a list of all these determinations um, and they say no substantial change on every single one of them in your approval. Um, no changes to air quality. Parked cars or cars that aren't moving that are running do have an air impact on air quality, so do gas stations. Um, so I'm wondering why there's no significant change there. Hazards that would be created by this project. I would say diesel tankers create a hazard, but here it says there's no significant change. Um, conflict with the general plan. Your own zoning ordinances for um, commercial neighborhood do not allow for car washes, do not allow for automotive repair. The Lewis specifically went around the zoning ordinance by doing it within the specific plan for the preserve. We will be literally one of the only places, or if not the only place in Chino that has something like this in their neighborhood because Chino's normal regularly normal zoning ordinance wouldn't allow it. It also wouldn't allow commercial neighborhood to be put on less than a five acre parcel. This is on a three acre parcel. So all those are in deference to Chino's normal ordinances. Um, so they do differ from the general plan. So when these things were presented to you, I'm not sure why staff has that there's no change. Um, noise. Specifically, a substantial temporary or periodic increase in ambient noise levels in the project vicinity above levels existing without the project. It says no change. And here's where the big problem comes in. The sound um, engineering that was done by PlaceWorks does not take into account ambient noise levels currently on the project site or within the community that it impacts. It doesn't even take that into account, doesn't address it at all whatsoever. So on its face, the actual noise study is flawed and it's flawed in more than one area. When they talk about shielding attenuation at negative five, to achieve shielding attenuation, you have to have a barrier that blocks line of sight. The line of sight from our bedrooms and even from, because we're directly across a four foot wall, I will have line of sight to the vacuums. The barrier there, the attenuation that they say is delivered cannot possibly be delivered without it actually being taller than the receptor. Also, they cite uh, ground level attenuation from just the distance that it's traveling. What it doesn't address is that when you do have a barrier that's not as tall as the receptor, but is taller than ground level, it actually takes out ground attenuation. I have several items here from several different sources that back that up, including a sound barrier design company, San Francisco University study, and a Penn State study. Mr. Padilla, you are coming close to five minutes. Okay. Um, basically, in considering that the, the sound study is 
flawed. Oh, by the way, the tractor that she mentioned, the normal decibel level for a reading from a tractor like that is 85 decibels. It's only three decibels louder than their vacuums. And at that distance, you heard it. That's a lot more than what we're gonna be getting from our second story windows. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, next written request to speak, Mr. Tony Page. Good evening, Council, Mayor. Um, I own the property across the street uh, where the Vera Villa Market is, and uh, and, it, and at some particular point in time, hopefully sometime in this next year, we're going to start planning to uh, build that corner out. Um, the things that they want to build on the other corner that uh, Lewis has um, are necessary components to a to a community, and I'm totally in favor of it. The noise levels I've dealt with tractors uh, that are as big as this room and have. Uh, decibel readings that are in the 85 and 90 degree, 90 percent range and this little tractor I understand can put out a uh, a decibel reading that could be in the 40 and 50 range I don't see too much of a problem um, with that uh, with a car wash over there because it's not every one of those car washes that I've been to it's they don't have it's not like a regular car wash like we have over on Riverside Drive where the cars are all backed up and they're going through there constantly you know minute after minute after minute all day long uh, those little car washes that I have seen and I've been to um, have sparse times when there's hardly anybody going through them at all. So I don't see a problem with it. I urge the council to take the appropriate measure to deny it, the appeal. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Page. Next written request, Matt Lowe. Uh, my name is Matt Lowe. I live on Candlewood Street in the preserve. Um, I've been there since 2009, so I've seen just about as many uh, construction cones as anybody in that area. Uh, I've heard a lot about um, uh, increased traffic and idling causing environmental problems today. Um, kind of struggled with listening to, to hear how uh, a coffee shop or a, or a fast food joint with a drive through and a gas station uh, would be better than... <clears throat> A car wash or a 7-Eleven. I don't know what would cause more idling and more traffic than a, a Starbucks or a or a uh, Carl's Jr. or something like that. So, at any rate, that's not that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to support this project. I think we're way behind in the preserve on developing that entire area. Um, I've seen Walmart DCs go up across across Euclid. Um, that's been a ton of extra traffic, but I understand the need for it. Um, that land wasn't being used to its full potential, and now it is. We see these huge businesses coming in, uh, lots of jobs. Uh, yeah, it comes with increased traffic, but I understand that. And what I'd like to see, in, especially in the preserve, is more small and medium businesses, uh, especially that can be owned and run by our own uh, members of our own community. Um, I work for a major company myself, so I, I understand the need for uh, increased commerce. And, uh, you know, being in the preserve so long, I have seen it uh, since 2009 grow and grow and grow. I'm, I'm excited about what's, uh, what's coming forward. So that's all I had to say. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know I've got other folks here that support me in that. If you want to stand, um, go ahead. Thank you very much. Next written request to speak is John Veldheis. Oh my gosh, you got it right. Did I? All right. Incredible. 
I know. My name is John Veldheis. I'm a resident in the preserve, a uh, lifelong resident of the Chino Valley, born and raised on a dairy. Uh, I remember when the preserve was being built and we complained about the traffic and the houses because on the dairies we had it pretty nice and quiet. Uh, but things change and I understand that. I'm in, I'm in favor of the car wash. I like to, I would be a carrying card member of the car wash. <laughs> because of the dirt and everything that's out in our area. But um, I also understand the concerns of the residents. And as long as everything meets the city's uh, requirements, I don't see any reason why there should be any hold up on the project. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony Cor Toby Cornell. Well, I can guarantee you he's not a dairyman. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I first want to thank all of you for everything that you do for the city. Uh, you guys make tough decisions for all the, the residents here in Chino, and I think you do a great job for the most part. And uh, I'm in support. <laughs> I'm in support of uh, of this project, and uh, I think it'd be great for the community. And I came to the Planning Commission meeting also, in, in full support and got to know more about the car wash and how state of the art it is. And there's nothing else uh, like it around here. And I think the owners of the car wash have gone above and beyond to make the uh, sound even less than what the requirements were because they are residents and because they are concerned about uh, people in their community. So it's not like this is an out of town owner and he's just coming in here and slamming this thing in and doesn't care about the community. You have community people uh, who own this business and they care about it. So I'm in full support of it and um, this shouldn't be a tough decision. Uh, you had full planning commission uh, approval. You have staff approval. So uh, this should be a vote for yes. Oh, this one's I'm gonna mess up on. Um, Barad, oh dear, Ho, Ho Sinod, I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> Your name is harder than mine. Hello, my name is Barad Hossein Zadeh. I'm a uh, resident of the preserve. I, uh, I'm a homeowner. I own a home right along the easement, uh, about 300 uh, feet away from the proposed car wash. Uh, I am here uh, to appeal uh, the construction of the car wash. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that have been mentioned already that, that I am in support of in terms of what uh, uh, the Padilla family as well as Ms. Daniels, Mrs. Daniels has uh, mentioned. I also, uh, I just want to touch upon a couple of things that are concerning to me. Uh, the deception involved in terms of the amount of information that has been communicated to the residents is very concerning. Uh, I purchased my home in January 28th of 2016. It was uh, mentioned to me that there was going to be a residential uh, community <coughs> right across uh, the easement. Um, the time frames of this car wash keep getting longer and longer. Uh, tonight is the, actually the first night that I'm hearing 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. for a car wash to be running seven days a week. Um, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, is very, very concerning. Um, most of our homes in the area are two or three stories. The majority, <laughs> in fact, I think almost all of them have a loft on the second floor uh, or on the third floor. Um, the majority of my time is spent in my loft uh, on the second floor, which is high above my three foot 11 inch wall and high above mm -hmm. the proposed uh, sound wall that I'm gonna say in quotes because the sound wall that they are proposing of six feet is not a sound wall. A sound wall, a true sound wall is the type of wall that you would see along the side of a freeway. 12, 15 feet, um, filled in completely, no sound penetration whatsoever, and that is not what I see proposed uh, for the car wash. Um, I'd like to also touch upon what Mr. Padilla mentioned in terms of the uh, sound uh, pollution. 
the amount of ambient noise uh, is not included inside of the, uh, the proposed plan. Um, the, uh, the amount of traffic pollution, uh, the number of cars, the number of um, incidences of backed up cars uh, on Mill Creek, on Pine, will cause uh, severe traffic, uh, dangerous conditions for residents, um, safety concerns as to the amount of uh, individuals that will be present 300 feet away from my house at a 24-hour 7-Eleven car wash, uh, gas station. Um, I'm not sure about uh, the crime rates, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty certain if you look at the uh, crime rates of uh, incidences that occur at or around 7-Eleven, no disrespect to the 7-Eleven representatives here, but the levels of crime uh, are significantly <coughs> higher near convenience stores, gas stations, 7-Elevens, than anywhere else. And um, the statistics are available and uh, readily available. You can check them out. Um, I am against the car wash. Uh, it is uh, not good for the community. Um, it, it's actually inappropriate to place a car wash, gas station, car mechanic shop so close to a residential area. I've never seen it before. Um, and it, it's, to me, I'm on, I'm on the north side and I'm, I'm waiting to hear what people on the east side of the car wash actually have to say, is they are 150 feet away, um, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., consistent noise uh, throughout the day, seven days a week. Uh, we're, we're, we're a small, uh, close community. We support business, but we do not support inappropriate business that does not fit our planned community. Sir, you are approaching the five minute mark. Um, in closing, I just want to uh, urge you all to please uh, uh, deny the uh, construction of this car wash. Uh, I'd like to just speak to you about uh, um, something that was mentioned earlier tonight. You mentioned that uh, uh, the little guys won when the city of Chino went up and uh, fought for their water rights. And, uh, and what was mentioned was that, uh, that it was a victory for community members. And we community members are here and we're asking for you to also give us uh, victory uh, tonight in uh, uh, overturning this uh, planned construction of a car wash. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is, if is I it can also make one, uh, one other um, comment. My apologies. Can those that uh, support uh, our view please stand? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think the next is, it looks like Scott Schaefer. Say that again? Shower. Shower. Sorry. Hi, my name is Scott Schaller. I've been a Chino resident all my life here. I'm a uh, mortgage broker by trade. I own my business here in Chino for the last 20 years. So I've sold uh, a lot of homes in the preserve, refinanced a lot of those homes in the preserve. Uh, when it comes to the preserve, the explosive growth has always been scary. The change is always scary. What makes up for change though is convenience. One thing buyers ask when looking at the homes in the area besides improved kitchen and bathrooms is where are certain things located? Where are the schools and supermarkets, etc.? They also want convenience. This area is very limited when it comes to these simple conveniences. For example, you have one supermarket, well two if you like organic kale and vitamins. This is the type of commercial growth we need for this east side of Chino. Not the million square feet of industrial buildings, but the simple conveniences. I would also like the council to consider this. Right now we have two individuals, Mr. Sousa and Mr. Van Mullen, two gentlemen who grew up here in Chino their whole lives, have had their businesses here in Chino that have been here for multiple generations and now are willing to invest millions of dollars of their own money into this community. 
not from special interests outside the area, an improvement to that dairy wasteland of empty space. They are pioneers taking a big risk, not corporations stamping these out wherever they can. They could have taken this car wash idea anywhere, but wanted to invest it here in Chino, where they grew up. What they want to build would be a huge selling point for properties located around this area. As a resident of the east side of Chino and a business owner here in Chino, I absolutely approve of them building this car wash and improving that area. Thank you. Chris Hornbeck. Good evening. Um, first of all, I'm a law enforcement officer with the state of California. I'm also soon to be retiring United States Marine. Um, I moved to Chino from Carson. I lived in the Victoria Park area. If any of you are familiar with that area, it's a highly uh, high gang area, okay? Um, I felt safer there with my wooden fence than I do with the three foot wall that is on uh, across from the easement. The second night living at that uh, location, I had four kids go into the closed section of the easement right on the other side of my house. Scary thought for uh, a father. So if you want to put a 7-Eleven and a car wash and you know a gas station that's open 24 hours a day on the other side you know, with access to the easement and access to my three foot wall in my backyard, you know, that's asking for trouble. When I'm working nights, my biggest fear is something happening to my family. And now I'm working nights and you're gonna have this up and now I gotta worry about it. That's great that these residents that live in the area support that. That's because it's not sitting on the other side of, of their wall. If it was, they probably would feel differently. The other thing is, no one's brought it up, but the city of Chino required me to pay an extra $5,000 for beautification on the north side because I was told Per the, per the city planners or whatever, that because residents are gonna be moving in on the other side, you have to have this so that they can see a beautified side of your house. So I have two extra feet of just dead space. It doesn't even go into my house, it just sits on the outside of my house that I paid five extra thousand dollars that I'm paying interest on because I was told by the city and by, by the, the builder that it's for beautification purposes. And you look at all the houses along that north side, they all have the same thing. They all had to pay extra for that too. If you wanted a house, that's what you had to pay for. Those are just some small items that is, you know, put into place and told to us that it would be a residential community. You know, I get off work at six o'clock in the morning and I get home at 6.30 and I look out my window and I see cars lined up from Euclid all the way to Mill Creek, lined up going to work, stopped, not moving. Now you throw a gas station, a car wash, and a convenience store in there, how much worse do you think it's going to get? A hell of a lot worse. I'm going to start hearing honking all the time when I'm trying to go to bed or I'm trying to take my kid out to school. So now what's going to happen is people are going to get tired of dealing with that. They're going to shoot down Mill Creek. They're going to shoot down my road. And that other road that's going to be opening up soon off of, off of Pine, they're going to shoot down that too when I'm trying to take my kid to school or I decide to allow my kid to start riding his bike to school. Now what happens? I already know as a cop what happens when a bicycle versus a car. It's not pretty. These are things that need to be thought of. I don't understand what the issue is with the other side of the street. Push things out or push things further down. You know, you go, everyone talks about that other gas station over there. Great. There is not a single residential home within 500 feet, if not 500 yards, of that gas station. Okay? And, and just to tell you, 500 yards is five football fields. Okay, what's right next to that gas station? A storage yard. And what's beyond that is usually the, the, uh, the preserved beautification for the wetlands or whatever, which is actually very nice. So there's some buffer there. But I am 1.5 miles away from the female jail. Every night when I go step outside to relax a little bit before I go into work, I can hear their PA for when they have them out at yard yelling, time to come in. That's 1.5 miles away, and that's a standard PA system that's only meant to be heard for the yard. Just to tell you, I don't know how many decibels that is, but that's loud if I can hear it 1.5 miles away. <clears throat> I, I mean, those are small facts. 
all of you are saying it is a great thing, but you're not, you're not living in my second story house. I'm going to see that or hear that every day. At this rate, I would rather be out back in Chino. I mean, back in Carson. I was better off. You know, I was down the street from StubHub, and I hear it all night. But that was far better than having someone come out of a 7-Eleven, run towards my house, hop in my backyard, break into my house, trying to get away from just robbing in the 7-Eleven. And then what's going to happen if he gets in my house when I'm home? Now what? Now I get, I'm stuck and I have to shoot him to protect my family? That's a scary thought. And now my kid sees that, all because you guys decided to vote to put what should have been a residential into a commercial? You know? That's a scary thing to have to put on my kid. That's all I have. Does anyone else support me? Please stand up. Thank you very much. Okay, and the last written requ request to speak is Chris Zars. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. My name is Christopher Zarp. I've been a resident of the preserve since 2009. Grew up in Chino in South Ontario. My wife and I are products of Chino Valley Unified School Districts. My kids go to Calero Preserve Academy. I'm in support of this car wash, gas station, convenience store, and lube center. I currently spend all of my monies for those services in either Eastville or Chino Hills. And in Chino Hills, there's two locations that are within 150 feet of residential areas. Off of Central Avenue, where the Albertsons parking lot is, and then, or the Albertsons Center, and then also the AMPM at, across from the 7-Eleven off of Central, and I don't even know the street name. But those are highly dense locations, much more dense than we're talking about. But as we put more high density housing into the preserve, we need to have services, and we wanna keep our dollars in the preserve. I have no problem with this car wash. As a business owner, if, you know the rules and you play by the rules and you issue a conditional use permit. That's why it's a conditional use permit. If you meet the requirements of that permit, you should be allowed to do business under the conditions of that permit. And in listening to their presentations over the last couple of planning commissions meetings and tonight, um, it appears that they're gonna do whatever it takes to meet whatever requirements that the permit is making them meet, whether it's noise, trees, walls, type of color of the ceiling. They've done everything in their power to make this uh, a great project for the city and appease all of the, the neighborhood. So with that, I, I approve of this area and thank you for your time. Okay, that's the last written request to speak. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to come forward please and give us your name? Hi, Hi. my name is Martine Lotto. I live at 7900 South Point. Um, few comments. Um, I don't know who these individuals are that support the car wash, and we haven't heard much about the 7-Eleven and, and longtime residents, so I don't know who the investors are and where that camaraderie is to support. But I live off of uh, South Point, which is um, 125 feet. My, uh, my home backs Mill Creek, so I'm going to be in direct not necessarily for myself, uh, the noise. I work during the day, but I'm concerned for my safety. I'm very, very, very scared. We are gonna be the scapegoats for all of Eastvale and Ontario coming down the street. There is an opening at the end of my street off of Pine that individuals can walk um, down our neighborhood. I've had um, several people knocking on my door, drugged out, a lot of different things, scraping of the cars. There is an element that's coming up and down that street that, that concerns me. Um, the element of a 7-Eleven, we will have, um, we will have children, we will have alcoholics, we will have a crime element. I do smoke two packs of cigarettes a day, so I'm very happy the 7-Eleven's coming in, but there will be another, there will be another element. Um, they don't carry them at the store across the way. Um, there, but there is going to be another element, and I'm petrified. I came from 38 years in Phillips Ranch where I was safe. I do own a business here um, in Chino as well. Um, and I'm petrified of where I've chosen to live because of what's coming there. I don't know if it's because of the land was cheap. Um, perhaps the land that's going to be sold at the store that's across the street would be the better way. <laughs> I do feel that we were duped as homeowners, that that was not going to be the case. So um, I don't know why 
I attended the meeting when Lewis Holmes was there at the Park House, and we were by no means told this was an open conversation of multiple businesses and bids would come out within a short period of time. We're already um, brought into a car wash and a slave. All of this was pre-done, predestined, and predefined. But we, the homeowners, have not had a vote, have not had a say for what's in our neighborhood. And again, I don't know if I'm going to make Chino my, my ultimate home. I don't live on the side of their, of their brick wall. Um, I'm going to live in the, in, in, again, in the midst of traffic. All of us will down South Point um, and Mill Creek. But I'm, I'm extremely concerned um, about my safety and my neighbor's safety. And um, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to address the council on this issue? Please come forward. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Hi, thank you for your time, council and uh, mayor. Um, Can I have your name, please? Um, I'm a resident. I live. I don't live on along the wall, but I live maybe a couple blocks away from the wall. And my concern is that when I when I purchased my home in around February, um, I was told that that was the place where the easement was that, that it would be it'd be residents. So I thought there would be homes there, and I have a newborn child, and just the thought of you know I like to take them in the morning in the you know walk them around the neighborhood, but already just the thought of like a car wash there just doesn't sit right with me. And 7-Eleven being there, I mean, that's more of a concern than me for a car wash. A 7-Eleven being there all night, I mean, if it was in your neighborhood, would you want that? It doesn't, doesn't sound right. It doesn't, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, there's kids, there's children there. It's a community of people and families. I mean, most of the people there have kids. And just to have this, it just kind of makes me not want to live there anymore. It makes me sad that I bought a home there. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. I'm Madam Mayor, I'm sorry. Yes, interrupt. Sir. I know you asked for a name for the record. Yes, I did. Um, and it says that they don't have to state it if they don't want to. I just wanted to make a notation that that will be noted in the record and uh, does not carry any weight in the testimony. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that was, yes, sir. At the conclusion of any more requests to speak, I've been asked to have a short break for council. Well, we have a speaker already. Hello, my name is Jason Park. I live at 16. 16218 Crane Court. I can't even really say my address because I just moved there last July. Joy was my representative selling the property, Sonata. It's about 250 feet north wall from where this corner is. And I bought the three story because it was taller. From the third loft, third, uh, three story loft, when I open the window, I see this space, okay, power lines, space. But Joy said, if you go to Park House, they have a model for this entire preserve plan. Go take a look at it. And they had future residential planning on this model. Great. I'll see houses. I have three kids. And instead of a large amount of money invested on the house, I was moving into Chino to invest in my all three kids. However, having them walk around the neighborhood, ride their bikes, will be my concern. Second, the original plan on that model showed a large space right next to homecoming. Retail plan. Take that corner, move it there. Everybody's happy. Why are you guys trying to build it when they've planned it for residential to begin with? Please just address the council. And next question is, why can't you move it there? We'll be all happy. You have your retail stores. We have our residential sto properties. No arguments. Let's stick to the original plan. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Park. Uh, sir? Uh, 
thanks for giving me this <coughs> opportunity. My name is Gautam. Uh, I live in- Can you spell that for me, please? Sorry? Can you spell that for me, please? C-O-W-D-A-M. Okay. Tom Apple Mary. Okay. <coughs> I live at 16140 Freshwater Lane. Uh, and I'm against this car wash coming to this area. <coughs> Uh, I work in Pasadena, 40 miles from here, and I had different options to buy a house. So the reason I moved to this place was because this was called as a nature's retreat, and it was a residential place and not a commercial place. So I wanted to invest in my future and for my family where my daughter and family can be safe. So I have a six-year-old daughter who I want her to be safe in the community and not the strangers coming in with all the 7-Eleven and car wash coming into the area. So with this to be considered, I vote against the car wash coming to the place. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Jasmine Moreno, and I am a resident in the preserve area. Um, I came here tonight with my daughter uh, for her senior project, and I always encourage my kids to be involved in the community, and I think that this meeting is a perfect example of why. Um, we were not aware of the gas station and uh, the 7-Eleven and the car wash. Um, being residents of the area, um, you know, I understand the noise. Um, the noise studies, but what I'm more concerned about um, was the traffic studies and if there was traffic studies done. Um, on Pine Avenue, anyone who lives in the area, as you all know, um, it's a dangerous street. It's a rural street. And that's my biggest concern as a resident. Um, it's dangerous to drive Pine on an everyday basis. Um, without the additional traffic and without a business being in that area. So my thought is, I, I, I'm just not understanding what the process, the thought process was to develop a business on that, in that particular intersection where there's only a two lane road. You know, people speed through that area. It's very dangerous. So I just want, you know, you to take into consideration um, the safety of the residents, um, the fact that it, it is a rural road, the fact that it is a two-lane road, um, the fact that there are already many, many accidents that happen on that road. Um, as a matter of fact, just this morning on the way to work, there was a bad accident on Pine. Um, I can just imagine the increase of that with uh, a retail um, commercial um, building on pine so i respectfully ask that you reconsider or just give a little bit more thought to this project um, prior to moving forward thank you for considering thank you <clears throat> uh, you've already spoken sir um no um probably if we have questions later but right now it's i want to hear the rest of the public that's appropriate yes ma'am Respected Mayor and City Council members, I would like to request. Can I have your name, please? Uh, my name is Kalyani Viramachaneni. Oh, I'm good grief. Seven, seven. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to spell it. Okay. Uh, I live on 7757 Meridian Street. Um, I would like to request to not approve this project of gas station, car wash for automobile, light truck, van cleaning, and convenience store which sells alcoholic beverages uh, and vehicle repair and maintenance. Like all of them result in high traffic <coughs> and pollution in an already polluted neighborhood, actually. We have, while buying this house, we have signed this entire big document of, for the house which says like it has road traffic, air traffic, fumes, electric magnetic fields due to high voltage power lines which runs in our backyards, uh, offensive odors, pesticides, fertilizers, chemicals, contamination, water, groundwater contamination. We have signed up for so many things because this house was like we could afford only this place. We could not afford a premium neighborhood or a premium uh, uh, community. 
like uh, after signing up for so many things, we are still we still have to accept for more contamination, for more pollution. It uh, like how much more can we accept? There should be a limit to accept pollution. Uh, I'm not sure like uh, when all they say it's negligible. When all the neg when so many things are negligible, when we pull them together, they become they become a lot when we are exposed to all of them together, when it's not one or two things, like when all of these combine together, it's so much of amount that we are exposed to. Uh, uh, that's, that's what, like I was worried about the pollution mostly, and now I ride with my son to school on bike, and I'm worried like I will not be able to do it in future, just as I do now. That's what, like please uh, do something about it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other people who would like to, okay? Hi, good evening, my name's Joshua Garcia. I live on a retreat court, just a couple doors down from Mrs. Daniels. Um, I've been, well, I grew up in Chino, went to Cortez Elementary, Chino High, Woodcrest Junior High in Ontario. Uh, I moved to Los Angeles, Orange County as I grew up, lived in Los Angeles for about five or six years. Decided to move back to Chino because it's what I it's what I loved the community, um, the the neighborhood that I moved into and the preserve is exactly what I found and what uh, I wanted my wife to grow up and build a family in. Uh, with the change in the uh, zoning at Mill Creek and Pine, uh, I see that the neighborhood's been deceived, um, maybe not uh, intentionally, but. Uh, because of the way that uh, it was approved through the city council, I, I found it unfair. Either way, uh, I don't think that's what's proposed to be built there. It uh, should be approved, and I think the city council um, should take another look at uh, passing it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Okay, with uh, no more public input, then we will close the public hearing and go to council questions of staff. Uh, Mr. Elrod, do you want to start? The, um, mm -hmm. uh, no. What are the do uh, doorways on that wall? What are, what is, is it? I don't understand that. Why would you? There, there's, a, there's a trail system along the easement and it's just to provide access in and out. But as, as mentioned earlier, um, if this council's desire to close those walls, you certainly you can add that as a condition. Add it, okay. And uh, the color, do we need to add that also? Um, I mean, you can provide that stipulation that it be earth tones, but that's that's what staff's direction's been. Okay, that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Um, <laughs> then we get trains. I mean, really. How many different ideas? Okay, um, we can also ask uh, questions of um, the applicant that's sure. here mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Mr. Duncan? Yeah, the only question I have is why, why hasn't that, why hasn't that sign been changed, or the display been changed? Is there someone here from Lewis or someone that can answer that? that? Madam Mayor, I would just recommend you reopen the public hearing to accept this testimony. Okay. Okay. Reopen the public hearing to accept uh, answers from council. Uh, yes, that does I mean, need to be changed. Walt Mitchell with the Lewis Companies, and we, we, it, it needs to be changed, and we will change it. Why hasn't it been changed? Uh, yeah. he, you know, everyone in the preserve has signed a, a non-disclosure statement, and we've provided that to staff that the zoning can change at any time and every, every single homeowner signs that document. It was just overlooked. Any other questions? No, that's it. Gary? No, that was my, that was my question. Okay, looks like it falls on me. And if there were no other questions of the applicant, you may want to we close the public hearing. No, and comments also, questions okay. or comments. Okay. All right, maybe All right. I wasn't, wasn't clear, so we'll go back down the line no. after Gary's finished. Okay, the, um, 
Sorry, Madam Mayor. Uh, if there are no oh, other I'm questions sorry. of we'll close the public Thank hearing. You. I apologize. It's good. Okay, Gary, okay. go ahead. Sorry. All right. Um, I just want everybody to know that I've really listened to everything that everyone has said. I've attended the planning commission meetings um, and the uh, and the findings from the planning commission. As you probably know, of the last few meetings we've had, I have not agreed with the planning commission. But uh, I do agree with the Planning Commission findings on this. Uh, the main reason I agree with it is because it is zoned commercial. Uh, it has been zoned commercial, and there's a you know commercial element coming in. Um, one of the things that came up this evening when we were, the reason I asked the questions about the meetings that had been attended, uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that came up was that um, they weren't told, you, I'm sorry, you weren't told about a, uh, specifically about a car wash, a 7-Eleven, a, um, a gas station, a lube, a lube uh, oil and filter um, facility. But uh, one of the things that you brought up that I hadn't heard before tonight was that um, you would have been okay with a coffee shop or a pizza place or even a gas station. And then, um, one of the problems that came up with what you, you know, what you were talking about as far as, as far as the traffic and uh, what, how would it impact the neighborhood um, because of what's coming in. But um, I think that a, uh, a pizza place, which also sells alcohol, the, um, um, and a gas station and a coffee shop, you're going to have the same amount of traffic going in there, the same amount of traffic going around. Uh, and again, if it's, you know, a Starbucks was mentioned, uh, if it's a drive-through, you will have you know you'll have traffic backing up there. Uh, one of the things that you, another thing that you brought up this evening, um, quite eloquently, was that about how bad the traffic is on Pine, and how dangerous the traffic is on Pine. So I'm assuming that all of you don't use Pine because of the danger. So you go the other direction and go up to uh, to you know. Um, Merrill or Kimball or whatever to uh, to get out of, to get out of there to avoid pine, so uh, that's already you know you're already doing that. The um, I just want you to know that uh, that I did I did listen and I did heed your um, your uh, request, Ms. Pidia, to to, uh, to come out to the neighborhood. I came out there quite a few times. In fact, uh, I stood by your house, didn't knock on your door, but I did stand by your house, look through that opening in the fence. Um, the, uh, but I did find when I walked it, I walked through the, that whole, uh, section and walked through that open gate to, to check it out. Um, the, um, and I'm getting ahead of myself. I want to, I want to, before I did that, okay, I went out, I did go out to the, the, uh, car wash that was on, uh, Euclid Avenue in, in Fullerton. And, um, again, I, I was was kind of upset by the color, which is, seems to be a, uh, to be a mitigated. But um, standing in the parking lot of that station, it was it was it was noisy. It was uh, you know it was noisy, and there was noise coming out you know out of the uh, out of the uh, ends of the, the wash itself, uh, and noise at the at the vacuums. However, because the homes are a football field away, 300 feet away, as is uh, on the on the map here. And I walked it off when I went, you know, and visited. Uh, I walked it off in Fullerton also. I walked 300 feet away to listen, and you can barely hear those vacuums at all. So I mean, I don't know about you know decibel levels. I'm not an expert on decibel levels, but I physically went there and listened, and you could barely hear anything <coughs> coming up coming from that car wash. The I also drove around drove around the area. Uh, pulled in some of the, I think, retreat. Pulled in some, you know, pulled in some of the streets. Got out, walked around, uh, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here, but um, those Edison towers that you're looking through right now, and some of you are looking straight through in order to even see where this um, commercial property is going to be. Those are, to me, those are some of the most offensive things I've ever seen. And maybe you're used to them, but I would rather look at a, you know, a. a Buildings like this over there, rather than looking through those those towers that you have to look through and those and those you know the, the wires that are coming down. <coughs> I also drove into um, Tradewind, 
drove into Tradewind, drove out to see how what it would be like to turn right from there, turn left from there, or what it's going to be like to go if they want to go straight across. Uh, I didn't. It didn't. Of course, it was middle of the day, so it didn't seem that that crowded at the time. But I t I did find uh, a gentleman that was in his front yard on uh, Tradewind and stopped, introduced myself, told him why I was there. He knew about what was uh, what was coming. Um, he said he had talked with you. And that, um, uh, I, so I asked him, what do you, you know, what do you, what do you feel about this thing? And he said that he didn't think it was, he didn't, he didn't really, you know, he wasn't in favor of it, but he didn't think it was that going to be that big a deal. And he has straight line of sight right in through trade run right into what it's going to be. And so he was, he wasn't that upset with it. Where is trade? Is that not trade win? What's the name of the street? That I'm comes? sorry, but we can't have interchange oh, with I'm the sorry. audience. <laughs> That's my fault, not her fault. Trade, uh, trade. Just for clarification, trade win is is the entrance off of uh, Mill Creek. It's yeah. right across the driveway. You know, the driveway entrance off of Mill Creek. It's right across the street from from your your area, but down. It's the one that'll be going into the uh, into this in the section. Anyway, he was he was okay with it. Um, with that being said. Um, I have to agree with the Planning Commission's findings, and I will be voting in favor of denial. In favor of denial. Denial of the appeal. Is that right? Favor of denial of the appeal. Voting for staff recommendation. It's confusing. Okay. Did you have any? Did you have any other questions of staff or the applicant? No. Okay. Um, Go back around. Earl, did you have any? No, I have any. No. Okay. I made a lot of notes. Um, I also don't understand why that display at the park house was not corrected. I think that was a very major mistake because people that are moving into those neighborhoods want to know what's around them. And so shame on the developer. Shame on Lewis for doing that. Um, maybe you didn't want to change the whole big model, but you should have done some kind of indication. Um, I would guess the three foot 11 wall that was put up and wrought iron that <clears throat> was put up on the houses that are on the north side of the easement uh, was done so, say, so they would have visibility. And they did buy those homes thinking that there would be homes across that easement from them. So um, I sympathize with that. Uh, when you move into a neighborhood and you think you know what's around you and then it changes, it is upsetting. Um, comments were made about uh, deception at a meeting that was at the park house, that they were led to believe that it would be, I guess, uh, development that would not impact them, it would be beautification. There was a point brought up about an extra $5,000 that people had to pay along that easement. Do you know what that, I don't understand that at all? No, ma'am, I don't know exactly what it is. I have a feeling I, I know what it is in terms of um, um, decorative elements on the back side of the homes that face the easement. Uh, I think that maybe the builder charged for those. Uh, we typically require uh, design elements on buildings that are visible to the public, so maybe that's what they're talking about. Interesting. I'm not sure. Um, no. <laughs> We're not here about refunds. Um, gosh, so much information. Let's see. Um, there was a comment that prior to the zone change, which was in October, correct, that there was solicitation and recruiting for businesses um, even prior to the actual zone change. That seems a little strange. Um, I don't know if that's typical of business or not, but it seems to be putting the uh, cart before the horse, so to speak, to solicit businesses before the zone is even changed. Um, that's that's uh, questionable. Um, I agree with council comments. Um, if this project goes through, the openings in the wall should be should be closed. That seems to be a consensus. 
um, was brought up about color changes. Um, I also don't like <laughs> bright colors and things should be should blend in. I know it goes in. But I'm just going to amend. Um, <clears throat> In the staff report, it brings up that um, the developer has already guaranteed they will not use pneumatic impact wrenches. That's interesting. Um, it seems like all auto mechanics use pneumatic impact wrenches, so that would have to obviously be enforced. Um, I have a question about Mill Creek and Pine Avenue. Now, eventually, Pine Avenue will be increased and be um, upgraded full width. On that particular corner where this development is proposed, will there eventually be some kind of stop sign signal or whatever? How will people turn north into that development safely if they're traveling east? I wish I could answer that. I'm going to actually ask that uh, public works staff help me with that one. Is anyone here that can answer that? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the location. I was in the back. If you're traveling eastbound on Pine, mm -hmm. how will people turn north into that commercial development safely? Will there be eventually a stop sign, a signal? Um, eastbound on Pine, uh, west of Mill Creek? You're turn, on Pine. no, north. before you get to Mill If someone were going eastbound and they wanted to go to the 7-Eleven. Okay. Okay, it's been brought up that it's a double yellow line. Yes. How would they safely turn into that development? You have to go up Mill Creek because it will be a right in, right out only for that location. You, on the interim, before Pine Avenue's widened, it will be the double, double yellow line of painted median. When Pine Avenue fully improves, it will then be the fold median island that's landscaped. But okay. that's still a ways away. Okay, so in the meantime, you can't turn up, well, how do you safely turn up Mill Creek right now without Pine being improved? It's a signalized intersection. Mill Creek and Pine Avenue is currently it's signalized. signalized. Okay. Yes. I did not realize that. Yes. And, and we made it right in, right out only because we didn't want traffic crossing that way. I heard comments of people will still make that. Per the vehicle code, the police department can enforce that movement. We didn't want to do that because of, of the characteristics of Pine Avenue. As you know, we're working on the design to do an interim widening or phased widening is a, probably a better word, where we're going to continue the two lanes going all the way to Euclid. Um, so we know that's coming. We're going to be getting into construction on that soon. Um, so that's why it was done that way. Now, when we start putting devices up, such as delineators or other things, then, then they, they, they tend to get hit just because people, you know, um, um, as they're driving down areas, you know, they'll, they'll go off the road a bit and, and, or over that yellow line and hit them. We've had that experience further east near Hellman when we put those up. So we, we don't like using those and they're very unsightly too. They don't, they don't work that well. So the painted median is enforceable, and then when the median island comes, it will then be right in, right out, just as it is today. So people will go north on Mill and then then turn left to go in, cross yes. traffic and go into yes. the center, yeah. and then exit <clears throat> the center. They'll either go out on Mills, Mills Creek to go left, which is east, or they'll have to go then mm -hmm. south and west. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. I think it did. Okay, thank you. Uh, any comments? Uh, there was a comment about crime rates near convenience stores. Um, Chief? 
do we have any statistics on? Good evening, Mayor. I don't have any specific statistics for that area. We do use crimemapping.com. What I can say is that, uh, generally speaking, to some of our commercial areas, it is um, there, to our commercial areas in town, there is a higher frequency of certain crime, and because commercial areas do bring uh, different opportunities for crime to occur. So, um, I, but I, I apologize. I don't have those statistics available to me. Okay. Thank you very much, Karen. If I could. Uh, when all the dust settles in this thing, can we have a higher uh, presentation or uh, people there? Pine Avenue evident evidently is getting to be pretty stacked up. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much code enforcement, or not code enforcement, but enforcement we're doing. Yes. What we, do, what we do, Councilman, is we do get requests for specifically enforcement down there. Uh, 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 circulation and traffic enforcement is perhaps one of our biggest complaints in that area. And it is uh, speed, stop sign violations, and certainly some right-of-way violations. And I, I'm certain that the members of that area can attest that our motor officers do uh, go down there quite frequently and try to enforce those violations. Presently within the city of Chino, we write approximately 600 tickets a month, you know, not specifically to that area, but that is about what we're, we're issuing per month you know, throughout the city. So we certainly pay attention to the traffic violations that are occurring down there. And if we get requests for enforcement, we will certainly do so. It was also brought up they were concerned about teens hanging out and stuff, you know, things like that. They can always call the PD for enforcement, correct? Absolutely, certainly loitering is, of course, of a concern at convenience stores or gas stations of that nature. And certainly report those incidents of loitering or pandering or any other sus uh, suspicious activity will respond uh, as uh, in, in order of priority. Thank you. Thank you. There's a point made that the other gas station has no housing near it. Um, it's quite a ways away. Um, where I live, there is a 7-Eleven on the corner of Francis and Central. And um, <coughs> it gets pretty noisy. There's also a gas, uh, there's also a regular car wash, an old style car wash on Central, south of Francis. And um, we can even hear it at our house. But that's the old style car wash, not, not the new improved car washes. I wanted to make a comment about that. Um, you know, something was in a hot corner. We thought we were styling. <laughs> the closest thing we have to a market. Sound decibels. Um, we hear the statistics, but it's very hard to, to tell the difference in that. Visual screen. Um, Okay, there was one of the appellants. This is Padilla, I believe it was. Um, on page 216 of our packet, uh, had written in mm. suggestions of relief if the item passes. I don't know if it'll pass this evening or not, um, but there's a request uh, to increase the sound wall to eight feet. And uh, there was a comment that the applicant had agreed to do that, even though the Planning Commission said no. Um, remove the openings, remove, I don't know about removing exterior vents from the car wash tunnel. Um, it sounds like they've done everything they can to decrease the noise. Additional landscaping of mature <coughs> trees along the entire, it sounds like they've put the trees in. Reduction of hours. The hours, um, I would agree, 7 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night, that's awfully late. Um, if this passes, I would suggest that those hours be modified. Can I just clarify? I mean, I know it's just it's a difference of an, an hour, but there's already a condition in the staff report uh, that it's from 7 to 8 o'clock, so they won't be able to operate till 9, but it's only an hour. Okay, this is a difficult issue, I have to tell you. Um, people bought houses, um, counting on homes being south of them, that's what they would look at. They have a short wall with wrought iron, decorative to look across open space and then supposedly at other homes. Um, I certainly understand the concern about that. Um, I don't, I do, 
I'm angry. I'm angry with Lewis for not um, changing that display in the park house. Um, you could have done something as soon as that zone changed to indicate. Um, people did move in thinking that that's what they were going to see across, and it has changed, and still your model shows the same thing. Um, I'm very aware of deceptive salespeople because we had it happen when the preserve st first started developing, as you gentlemen will recall. Um, people were told, not perhaps by you, but by some sales representatives, that the dairies were going to be gone. No worry. And we faced complaints for years about odor and flies, even though they were grandfathered in and allowed to dairy as long as they chose. Um, we took special action to try to protect those dairies to be there as long as they wanted to be there. But the salespeople misled uh, people that bought those homes, and we received the pressure from that. So um, I'm particularly sensitive to what is perceived as deceptive. Um, that angers me, I have to tell you. I don't think it's fair. Um, I also um, am very sensitive to people who, in, um, in all honesty and openness, uh, buy a business or buy a piece of land to open a business um, under the understanding that it's zoned that way, that it's completely allowable, uh, it's within the code, there's a special conditional use permit to require them to do extra things. It isn't fair to them either. So both sides in this situation are hurt. Okay, it, It's very difficult for a business person to find a location and then when they do, to get all the backlash. It's unfair to both sides. So this is a no-win situation as far as I'm concerned. Um, traffic on Pine will not be fixed for years. I think we're about 33% built out on the preserve, so about 33% of the improvements have been made. It's about $175,000 to do all of the improvements in the preserve. We don't have that kind of money. It comes in as land is developed. So it's, the area is going through growing pains. When it's finally fully developed, then all the roads will be done. If we can do it for $175,000, I'll. Yeah, no, she, she meant, she meant $175 million. Yeah, no, million. I'm, I'm million. I million. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. $175,000, we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> Earl will finance it. Little, yeah, I got, yeah. hey, I'm right on that. You know? <laughs> Sorry about that, I meant million. Um, so there are growing pains in the area, and we're going to be faced with that for a long, long time, I'm afraid. Um, PD is doing the best job that they can. It takes a partnership with the neighborhoods, absolutely. Can I guarantee that your neighborhoods will always be crime-free and totally safe? Nope. Not any more than anybody else in this whole world can guarantee that. So that's why we ask for neighborhood watch and people to be involved in their communities, because uh, it takes all of us. Call, see something, call some, call it mm -hmm. in. Um, like I said, this is a no-win. Um, certainly the people opening the businesses have a right. Uh, if, if I could have a preference, I would say wait until the roads are fully developed, and that isn't going to happen because it also takes development to improve those roads. So, um, like I said, this is no-win. Um, I think all the mitigation that the business owners and the developers have offered are good. I think uh, they have gone probably beyond, and apparently they're willing to even go further. So uh, I don't know how much can be requested here this evening, but I would suggest that we do as much as we can. Fred, do you have a comment? I, yes, I'm happy to answer some of those issues. On uh, I know at least one speaker asked for at least four suggested revisions to the project. Um, and I heard a few council members also uh, express some willingness to support that. Uh, the earth tones, for example, for the walls, uh, closing the opening of the wall to the easement area. There was uh, increasing the height of the wall to eight feet uh, rather than six feet converting the wall from a decorative wall to a sound wall um, and a limitation of hours. I know there was a clarification on the actual hours, uh, but with that, I think that was the scope of the suggested changes. Um, if this council 
wishes to adopt that in any motion, you could certainly provide that direction. Um, and I would just suggest that you ask the applicant if all those changes are acceptable. Um, I'd like to ask the applicant to come up. And I apologize, sir. Can you give me your name again? Yeah, Walt Mitchell with Lewis Retail. Okay, you have heard the extra requests. Do you have any comment? Well, I, <clears throat> I think we did offer up at the previous meeting of going to an eight-foot wall, um, and we're, we, we're willing to honor that again. I think it was, uh, there was some comments back from Planning Commission at the time that, you know, there is a one decibel level difference of going from six foot to eight foot. And that's what our sound engineers calculated on that. So it is not a, an appreciable amount of, of different attenuation. We agreed to do it to eight feet. So we're fine with that. Um, a block wall is, 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 and a sound wall are the same thing. So it'd be basically a concrete block wall, decorative in nature with the cells filled. It's, it's, it's a concrete block wall. Can it? Um, There's no thinking of, of visual impact. Um, I understand you cannot plant on the easement side. Correct. Uh, because of Southern California Edison. Um, but I've seen walls that are allowed to have vines cover them. Is there any way to do that? To, we, to lessen the impact of a solid block wall? Well, number one, we could certainly make it a, a decorative block wall on the back side. So it would be, could be a, a split face block, which is more expensive on both sides. The problem with having vines growing on the opposite side is we wouldn't have any means to irrigate. So um, <clears throat> that would be that would be an issue, just in guaranteeing that the plant material is going to live. Okay. What about uh, closing up the openings? The, the the opening in the as Warren had suggested, it was purely a planning request. Planning's fine with closing it. We're fine. That was just a condition that was asked upon us by staff. And so muted, we're fine. Muted colors. Muted colors, I believe, is already agreed to. It's in the colors that we submitted. Uh, the, the colors that you saw at the other locations are their prototype. The colors that are on your planning package of the earth tone colors, the matching block, uh, and those types of features, they are defined in your package as to the colors. And no, they are not red uh, within the car wash. And the hours? I believe the hours were already agreed to at 7 to 8, and I believe that was in the planning package. There was comments that it was 7 to 9, but was in the previous, I believe, uh, planning commission approval, the hours were 7 to 8. <clears throat> and I believe the tenant is good with that. Okay, that's all the questions that I have of you, Mr. Mitchell. Any questions of Mr. Mitchell? I'd like to make a motion if I could, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, a motion would be appropriate. Okay, uh, I'd like to deny the appeal of the Planning Commission. I would like to add an amendment to raise the block wall to eight feet. I would like to make sure the hours are adequate. Business has to be open so many hours, so I don't know. Eight o'clock, if they're good with it, I'm good with it. Uh, let's see, the door, the entrances that were in the wall, I think they have to be filled up. I don't see how you can walk through and get in the easement through on that property. And that's about it for me. And the color, of course. If I, if I may, Madam Mayor, clarify yes. a couple points. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I know on the eight-foot high wall, um, there was a comment, and I believe it's currently in your conditions, that it, the wall does drop off for line of sight issues as you get closer to uh, Mill Creek. Mill Creek. You mean on the corner? Near the corner, yeah, right. so you can see traffic. So with that qualification, as to the hours, I would just suggest they be more specific if, mm -hmm. if they are going to be made part of a motion. I, think I don't know if staff has staff any suggested clarification. Uh, no, I was going to actually bring up the one about the wall because as you transition out to Mill Creek, the wall, yeah. it, 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 it's designed to transition down so there's a visibility. If you sure. for being provide an eight-foot wall out there, it's going to block visibility. So no, all I, I would ask is that we hold it back as 
we're we talking about the north. That's what I mean, the north. Yeah, it has to step down so yeah. you can see traffic yeah. so or, you can pull or, out the front. Yes, ma'am, or be held back to a point where the visibility's okay. I don't think it'll chop most of the wall off there. I think it'll be fine. How far back does it go? How, How far back will it have to be cut back sure for this, safety? I'm not sure at this point, ma'am. We would have to study it. Well, right now, where is it? Where does it? Oh, it shows from? it back at three feet, uh, 100 feet back. 100 feet. Oh, geez. That's an awful lot. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's way. I mean, you don't need 100 feet for Correct. visibility. Correct. So, can we we can we determine that tonight? Jose. Jose. That would be hard without a study, but I would suggest uh, that to, to do a site distance analysis with our engineering staff, when they do that, generally speaking, it's going to be you know 10, maybe 15 feet back. So I, I'm, a recommendation would be just to do a site distance analysis and the result of that. I know it will not be 100 feet back, you know. So I don't want to give you a precise number of three feet or four feet tonight. Just if we if we do that, it, it it'll it'll uh, achieve your goal uh, of the of the wall issue. Okay. <coughs> it has to be minimum. I mean, it yes. has to be safe, but it has to be minimum. Right. You still have to be able to see the traffic, as you said, and and we we pull shrubs back, everything back. There's the corner sight distance that we do, and uh, that would have to be uh, pulled back um, on that. So I would just recommend, uh, per an engineering sight distance analysis approved by uh, the Public Works Department. So at a, at a minimum amount as necessary to achieve the safety based right. on a site uh, study. Okay. Okay. I'll include that in my motion. Since That's all, Madam Mayor. Okay. There's a motion. <coughs> so the last, I'm sorry to keep yes, interrupting. Sir. The last That's issue fine. is I would recommend some specificity on the hours. I, I, I haven't heard uh, I, precisely. I like the hours. Can include that. The hours are fine. The hours are fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So 7 a.m. to 8 p.m.? In that's the, what's in there. Now that's the car wash. Yes. But a 7-Eleven is open 24 hours a day. Right. I'm not going to limit that. What about the lube shop? Well, they car must, repair. I don't think they're going to be open 24 hours a day. Well, it doesn't matter what we think. I think yeah. we need to put specifics down. If they don't have impact wrenches, they're probably going to be open at all. They're not going to have <laughs> impact wrenches. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The lube is also 7 to 8. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, is there a way that that can be monitored, um, say, and brought back a year after construction or something to make sure that everything's being complied with? Um, if I may, uh, yes, certainly you could have a condition that says um, the approvals granted tonight will be reviewed by staff and, and an update will be provided to the Planning Commission for compliance, uh, for a report of compliance with the conditions. At once the site is constructed. Right. Okay. There's a motion from Councilman Duncan. Second from Councilman George. Any further discussion? Okay. This I am going to make a comment, and that is this is, like I said, this is very, very difficult. Um, I look at the development on Central Avenue with the great big gigantic wall, and it's uglier than I'll get up and that was approved by our staff and is supposed to be modified and has not. So I don't think looking at a big block wall is really a good thing to have to do, but you need some kind of division between that site and the homes, definitely. Um, like I said, Mr. Loy, I'm angry at Lewis. I'm angry for not changing that site. I'm angry for not having people um, actually notified what's going on. I'm, I'm angry that they were led to believe it would be a low impact uh, business on the corner. That isn't fair to people that you're selling houses to. And my heart goes out to the developer. I mean, not the developer developer, but the owner of the businesses. And then you're moving forward out of good faith. Um, put, I'm assuming putting money down, whatever, drawing plans, going to the extent that you've gone and only to be kind of slapped in the face with a shock that people don't want you. So again, it's a no-win situation. Because of the legalities, because the zone was changed, um, I'm going to vote in favor of it this evening with all of the mitigation possible, but I will strongly 
encourage our staff to watch very carefully things like this, especially when there's any kind of proposed zone change that would impact neighborhoods around them. Um, and I would also warn uh, any landowner who proposes to change things that they've got to do better communication and they have to be fair to the people that already live there. Okay. There's a motion from Councilman Duncan, second from Councilman George, and the item passes for yes. Thank you this Boy evening for up. coming. Um, it's a no win. Okay. You want to call um, Mr. Howie back in? You have to wake him up. Yeah, he's probably. Is there a ball game on or something? <laughs> Matt, would you call Mr. Howie yeah. back in, please? If you can find him. Corner. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a good nap? Yeah. Come. <coughs> nap? 13 to 5. <coughs> Agenda's mayor and council reports. Um, I'd like to give an early reminder for everyone to attend the Spring Bingo Bash on Monday, May 15th at Brinderson Hall. Beginning at 5.30 p.m., this friendly and fun event offers both a delicious pasta dinner and 10 beagle games. Hard Tickets can be purchased at $20 <laughs> per person yeah, right. prior to the event or $25, what did I say it wrong? $25 per person if purchased at the door. For more information, please call 909-334-3270. And lastly, we will be having another installment of our Hike the Valley series on Saturday, May 6th at Chandry Falls Trail in Sierra Madre. Shuttle services will be provided and will depart Carolyn Owens Community <laughs> Center at 7.15 a.m. with an anticipated return of 11 a.m. The cost for non-residents is $26 and the cost for Chino residents is $16. All participants must be at least 10 years old to participate and for more information, please call 909-334-3258. Um, brief report, uh, I attended uh, a fundraiser on the 19th at Los Portales for um, Isaiah's Rock, absolutely packed. Um, they had a fabulous turnout and the uh, police department were the, the um, waiters, so to speak, although they didn't really deliver food, they just kind of were there to help. On the 22nd, uh, Chino Rotary had their Stepping Up for Boys. That was also a very, very nice um, event, very similar to Stepping Up for Girls for sixth grade boys, uh, all the boys going into seventh grade. Art Uncorked was the 27th, um, and that's always a very, very nice event to attend. Uh, the 28th at noon, I attended the Watermaster Court hearing. That was very interesting, and Mr. Gutierrez gave us a report out on that. I also attended the boxing banquet that evening. Uh, and I've invited uh, the Boxing Foundation to bring their 12 uh, monthly winners and uh, the three grand prize winners, so to speak, to our next council meeting to have them introduced. It's a fabulous program for young people. And then uh, on the 29th, there was the opening ceremonies of the Corporate Challenge. Um, that was a lot of fun, but I will tell you something, it was so windy. Oh my gosh, I felt so bad for the, for the relay runners. Uh, so very quickly, I will just recap what our own city of Chino did. Uh, the women's police department, 36 and over, came in first place. Yay. They also came in fifth place. I'm not going to say who else won things if it wasn't us. Women 18 to 35 came in fourth place. Women Chino, Chino PD. Men's 18 to 35, first place, Chino PD. Yay. And fifth place, Chino T, uh, PD. And then men 36 and over, um, the city of Chino came in fifth place. I'm not going to talk about those other places. They don't get mentioned. Um, and then we had the tug of war. Um, uh. We didn't come in so good on that. First place was the gas company, second place, Chino Hills. 
Third place, LNL Wood. Fourth place, NFI. And fifth place was a tie between Jacuzzi and Hussman. Mm -hmm. Now that was interesting to watch. Thank goodness there weren't, no one got hurt this time. I guess in the past there's been dislocated shoulders and mm -hmm. broken ankles and all kinds of stuff. That's a rough it's sport. A and then yeah. horseshoes, which were Monday. The yeah. women, city of Chino came in first. Yay. Uh, <laughs> men, city of Chino came in second. Yay, and I want, and PD, co-ed, came in first place. So we're good at horseshoes. That's appropriate considering our background. And that's the only report I have this evening. Mayor Pro Tem Howie. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, when you carry a gun, it scares the other participants quite a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, the PD, right? <laughs> Um, I attended a number of meetings the last couple of weeks. I won't go into all of those, but I wanted to um, uh, invite everybody to come out to the Chino Air Show this weekend, uh, for the 6th and 7th of May. This weekend, uh, you're going to see all the great warplanes of World War II, and we got some big jets flying, and the air show is always a lot of fun, and there'll be lots of people. And I think the weather's going to be a little cooler this weekend, too. So, uh, Hopefully that, not yeah. windy. And hopefully not too windy, because some of those air shows, when it gets to be 90, 95 out on that uh, tarmac, gets a, gets pretty gets pretty hot. But anyway, come out to the air show this weekend, the 6th and 7th. You'll have a great time. That's all I got. Okay. Councilman Duncan. Yes. On the 17th of April, I chaired the uh, Board of Directors meeting for the Mosquito and Vector Control District. On the 18th, I attended the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors meeting. Also on the 18th, I attended the Caltrust annual meeting. Uh, that was a telephone one because I didn't go to Monterey. On the 27th, I chaired the YMCA board meeting in Chino. And also on that day, I attended the pizza and politics at the Carolyn Owens building put on by the Chamber of Commerce. We had the uh, Inland Empire Utility Agency was the speaker. And... If I could read my own writing, I'd know what that is. <laughs> okay. And last night uh, we attended bingo with Rancho del Chino Rotary Club, and I kept my, uh, both Cindy and I kept our streak intact. We've now played over 500 games of bingo without winning one. <laughs> so, You're really good at it. Anybody <laughs> wants to figure out how to lose at bingo, I can do it. Even if the, if the only ball that you had to get was the free space, Somebody beat me. <laughs> so, anyways, that's the end of my report. Councilman Elrod. Yes, thank you, Ma Madam Mayor. Um, Tom and I attended the Economic Development uh, Committee meeting, and it was pretty interesting. We have some pretty nice stuff, hopefully, coming up that yeah. will help the sales tax around here. So we'll be working on that for a while. And that concludes my report. Councilman George. On the 24th, the uh, Community Service Commission meeting. Uh, and by the way, Brenda, the, uh, those corners that you mentioned are terrible, and Linda knows about them, and the, they're, they're being looked at as we, as we speak. We're talking about Magnolia and, and um, Edison and Cypress and Edison. You can't uh, safely make turns off of that. Uh, so that was, I'm glad you brought that up. On the 27th, I went to coffee with a cop. Yeah. And um, that was great. That's the first, exactly. you know, obviously, the first one that I've attended. Um, the, and it's, I think it's a fantastic idea. The, the neighborhood loved it. Even the, the um, child care center up the street brought, the, uh, brought their, their kids down. And they got the little badges and, you know, and, and got the, they didn't sit on the motorcycles, but they got to, you know, play around with the motorcycles, play around the motorcycle. And um, just had, they had a wonderful time. It's a great idea. And then, of course, that evening was Art Uncorked, which was, I think, one of the best Art Uncorks that uh, we've had. It was, uh, it was well attended and uh, an excellent event. On the 28th, the Chino Youth Boxing Banquet. And I think it's great that we're bringing the boxers here because they, they, that was the best part of the evening. Not us talking, for sure. On the uh, 29th, uh, once again, the, uh, I attended the Chino Portuguese uh, dinner at the DES Hall the 35th annual dinner, uh, which was fantastic. I've never really had food like that before. <laughs> very interesting. Uh, and once again, got yanked up to do more dancing and embarrassed myself as usual. The, uh, on the 30th, the Pomona Valley Vietnamese Community Fall of Saigon event. And on the uh, first uh, Rancho Del Chino 
Rotary Bingo Night. Now I'm used to, the last time I played bingo, it was just you know either this way or this way, but there's so many different ways of playing bingo now that it's a, it was a very, it was a very interesting evening and I lost all night too. That's it. Okay, Mr. Ballantyne, any report this evening? I have no report, Mayor. Mr. Glante. No report, Mayor, thank you. Chief. <laughs> Okay, and we got so late that we lost uh, the fire chief, so Mr. Ed Gray, Director Gray's here. Last man standing, no report. Okay, with that, we are adjourned to our next regular meeting, which will be held Tuesday, May 16th at 7 o'clock, closed session at 6 o'clock if necessary.